This is Sky Sports 3. Five, Three, two, one, we're live. The Newcastle Arena plays host to the Express Cup final. Can Air add this to their growing collection? Not if the Bracknell Bees have their say. The Express Cup finals on Sky Sports 3. <laughs> The Air Scottish Eagles have dominated Super League so far this season. The League and Cup champions are now favourites to complete the treble. In contrast, the Bracknell Bees are out to defy the odds and win their first ever major trophy here in the inaugural Express Cup final. So we've travelled to the northeast for the climax of ice hockey's newest competition. It's a final that's thrown up two teams with two very different reasons for winning. The Air Scottish Eagles against the Bracknell Bees, live and exclusive from the Newcastle Arena. So Trophy 3 is up for grabs, another big event in what's been a very busy season for Ice Hockey Super League. Taking time out of his busy schedule to join us for this one, the Nottingham Panthers coach Mike Blaisdell. Good to see you, Mike. Well, we it's not unfair to say that the Air Scottish Eagles have been absolutely awesome so far this season. Can they be beaten in the big events? Well, they're a great hockey team and uh, they've shown all year they've got uh, they've been consistent. They've been they've been up for all these big games. So it's, you know, Bracknell have a real tough assignment. Bracknell, of course, we know a lot more about air than Bracknell. They haven't been on this big stage so much as the Air Scottish Eagles. How are they going to cope with it? What is Jim Furichuk going to do with his team tonight? Well, I think they've got to be really excited. And, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, for them, the air are a little bit tired of winning trophies for some reason, or, or maybe they're not up for the game. They don't put as much pressure on themselves, and, and Bracknell play out of their skin and uh, come home with a trophy. Thanks very much, Mike, for now. Well, these two teams have met six times so far this season. The scale's definitely tipping in favour of Air 5-1. They lead Bracknell over the whole season. They've both come here on the back of some really good form, having lost only one of their last six games each. Nick Rothwell's been taking a look at what makes these two tick. Jim Lynch has created a side that has been unstoppable all season. Much of their success down to the depth of the team. Mark Montanari is their leading point scorer with 73. But that's closely followed by Mark Wolf, Sean Byram, Sam Grolo, and Jamie Steer. Angelo Catanero has steered the team to victory with his discipline and determination. Alongside him, Scott Young, a tough man on the blue line, and is feared throughout the league for his offensive abilities. Many claim the Air's success is due to their goaltender, Rob Dobson, who's been outstanding all season. But the Express Cup is Colum Cavilla's tournament. He's played in all but one of the games and is third in the goaltending averages. With depth like that, no wonder they're favorites to win the treble. The guys are confident and uh... Uh, we, we have the experience of being in two major, well, B and H was a final, but every every week leading up to try and get the last two points for the league was like a final for us too. So we we played under a lot of pressure lately and come through. So we expect to, expect to do it tonight as well. The Bracknell Bees have been the surprise package of the season. As one of the smaller clubs, they weren't expected to keep up with the big boys. Coach Jim Fjordchuk has kept a close rein on the team, and the Bees are playing tight, controlled hockey. The journey away to Bracknell has become one of the toughest fixtures for any team in the Super League. Joe Faricholi's their leading point scorer with 63, but he's not greedy. 49 of those have been helpers. The sharp shooting for the Bees comes from the powerful Chris Brandt, Tom Gomes, and last year's Super League's top point scorer, Dale Junkin. Goaltender Mark Bernard has been solid between the pipes all season, and he'll have to stand on his head to keep the air snipers at bay. Bracknell have the discipline and strength to beat any team in the league. Your Chuck's men, though, still have to show that they can do it in the big games. 
as a team it's a first for us but when you look at our lineup we've got some players that have been on championship teams they've been in games like this before they realize what's on their plate uh, so it's it's really nothing new it just means that as a team it's something new for us but uh, you know we've, we've got the confidence in that room like we've been playing well uh, you know we've been working hard and I just feel that if we stay with that uh, we, sh we should do all right tonight. Jim Furyshuk, the Bracknell Bees coach, looking forward to this one. As we all are, the atmosphere here at the Newcastle Arena is certainly building into something of a climax. Mike Blaisdell, we're used to seeing the Scottish Eagles going out, taking a bit of pressure, and then going for it on the break. Is that the kind of game do you think they're going to play here in the first period? Yeah, I think uh, Air will stick to the way they've always played. They're so consistent. They, 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 they like to jump out to a quick start. they got a lot of firepower, but uh, Brackle are very good defensively. Do you see Bracknell getting an, an early goal and perhaps getting a little bit of confidence or are they just going to keep going at there, letting air come at them and just perhaps in the first period we're not going to see any goals. Rockle have scored a lot of goals lately in the Super League and they're they're very capable of scoring and, and Jim Fjardchuk is a good coach. He's got them playing a very disciplined system but they, got, they go for the goals and so I, I think it's going to be an exciting game tonight. It's going to be an amazing game. Thanks very much Mike. Well it's almost time now for face off so let's join our commentary team. It's Bob Carroll and Tony Millard. As they go for their third trophy, Bracknell play in their first ever final, but a cup final can be a great level. Neither club would have been among many people's choice for a trophy at the start of the season, but both is producing, well, some sparkling hockey these days. Air start with Colin Cabilla in goal. On defence, it's Vince Bow and Joey Middlestep starting forwards with Jamie Steer, Sean Barham and John Parko. For Bracknell, it's Mark Bernard in goal. Starting on defence, Todd Kelman and Shane McCosh. Up front, it's Brian Pellerin, Colin Ward and Dale Junkin. A referee tonight, fast player, of course, a big defenceman in his own right, Mike Rowe. He's a local man doing his first ever big final. The action could be thick and fast here, a good crowd in this Newcastle arena. Bob Carroll is alongside me, as we said so many times, Bob, but we know full well that the first goal is going to be very important. It always does. It's a confidence builder, Tony, and that's the most important thing, especially in these big cup final games. We've near a capacity crowd here tonight. There's a lot of Air Scottish Eagle fans I see around the building. Someone's saying something about 1,500 coming down from Air to watch this Express Cup final. Well, we're just about to get underway. Uh, Mike Rowe held up by a little problem with the barrier, but now it's the Air Scottish Eagles in the lighter strip, defending the goal to our right. The Bracknell Bees, conventionally, of course, in the black and white stripes, and they're now in possession behind their own goal. This is a shame of Cox number 77 in possession. And the uh, puck clear right up the ice that chases on. Colin Cavilla, the goaltender for air there, singing away, but still locked in that uh, defensive zone. And now the break is on here for Vince Bow. This is Sean Barham. He knocks it into the corner. Bow will chase. A good cover from Pellery. Middle step follows up, and that's it. Green start for the Air Scottish Eagles, and I don't think anyone would have expected this gentleman to score that big goal for him. Joey Middlestead just driving that puck to the net. Bit of an errant play there, though, by Mark Bernard in the net. He doesn't maybe perhaps run that the whole way, and he doesn't have a blocker in the right position. And of course, that gives Air a big first goal lead. Well, just 36 seconds on the clock, and Joey Middlestead grabs his first goal of the season in a cup final. Well, not a good start for Mark Bernard. First shot on goal. Mark Bernard, well, he bungled it, to be fair. They are playing with confidence. Already two trophies behind them, and now a goal in front very early on. Bracknell's point of view, Bob, well, they've got to just uh, consolidate and uh, forget about that, haven't they? Well, the Air Scottish Eagles playing with a lot of confidence, Tony, but they've just got to cal calm down and build from that now. They know that they're down a goal, that's no problem. There's plenty of hockey left to play. Mark Bernard knows that it's a bit of a problem in that regard, but he's got to get that confidence back. At the same goal, this is Mark Wolf in possession, causing problems. There's a yeah, confident move, pen back the Bracknell Bees. Held up in the corner, almost skating on it. Comes loose to Mark Wolf. 36 seconds, that goal coming in very quickly. Sam Grillo in possession now. Air Scottish Eagles in confident mood and pushing all the way. 
But cleared into the neutral zone, and this is Joe Pelotoli, but Rattleby's a chance here for them. Oh, and the miss there, Chris Brandt storming in on that pass, and a great chance to put them level. Break is on though now for the Scottish Eagles again with Montanari. And this time Bernard gathers the shot, saves Shaw, and that gives us a chance to look at the squads. We'll start with the Air Scottish Eagles tonight with uh, Colin Pavilla in goal, Angelo Catanera, their captain, Joey Middlestat, the big number 44, already his first goal of the season. Purdy, who scored a few valuable goals for them, a lead clincher in two in a game the other day, and Sam Grillo, too, has been banging them in, number 27. Jim Lynch, their coach, in a vital role, already two trophies locked away in his cabinet. Face-off is now deep in the... Brackle B's defensive zone. This is Catanaro, the air captain. And takes a deflection straight over the barrier. Gives us a chance to look at Bracknell B's lineup here tonight. Mark Bernard, the goaltender. Scott Campbell, British player, of course. The two Burt brothers, Greg and Dennis. Brian Pellerin and Dale Junkin, of course, who was the uh, top scorer in the British League last season, number 91. Joe Ferraccioli, who tops the assist scorers in the Express Cup. Still, this is Scott Young. Young goes for the slap shot, takes a deflection, drops down in the far corner. So, uh, Greg Burke holding his man up against the boards there. Doesn't come as far as Purdy. Scott Campbell knocks it around the boards. And now Scott Young will get back as the officials wave this on. It's Dennis Burke chasing it into the corner for the bees. into the corner and that will produce the icing call and take the action up to the far end of the ring to give us a chance to join Nick Rothwell ringside. Bob, i got to agree with you. I mean, that, that goal is going to hurt Bracknell's confidence a little bit. But I was talking to Jim before the game, and what he was saying is that, you know, they're going to treat this game like any other. And they get scored on quick in other uh, quickly in other games, and they just got to bounce back. But Jim just calmed the guys down on the bench really quickly. And I'll tell you, the 20 guys, well, not almost 20 guys, popped up, and they were ready for the next shift. They're ready for this game. There's 56 minutes left. It's not over yet. Well, the other point there is, Nick, is that this team, the air, or the Bracknell Bees, I should say, They've got nothing to lose here. They've got a long ways so far in this Express Cup final, and the pressure is off them now. They can just go ahead and play their hearts out, and they're going to do that as a team because that's the way they got themselves here. This is Kelman with the cover for the Brattle Bees, and eventually a pucker disappearing out over the bench. Well, you've tuned in late. You've missed the first goal. Joey Middlestat's first goal of the season, too. After 36 seconds, that man there, Mark Bernard, was the one who let the puck in. And this is how it happened. Well, that's big Joey Middlestad. He's got a good slap shot as well. But it's a bit of a flipper, as we call him. And Mark Bernard just misplaces that one and, of course, goes in on the short side on him. He's got to well, get that confidence back. And still air push forward. This is Vince Bowe. Held up into the corner. Still confident air Scottish Eagles are pegging back the Bracknell Bees here. This is Brian Perrin for the Bees. Todd Kelman helps out. Parco can win the puck back there for the air Scottish Eagles. The officials stop play, produce a face-off as they lose sight of the puck. That goal from Joe Middlestep was mighty quick, but not the quickest in the Express Cup this season. Derek Jan Blackstone from Nottingham scored one in 18 seconds earlier on. But there's the man who's the man of the moment tonight, his first goal of the season. Well, there's contrast and interest, no doubt. And we have to say, this is what Joey Middlestead's known for. He's a good, solid defensive defenseman, and he has a very strong physical presence for that Air Scottish Eagle blue line. Well, goal scoring, not his ability, but tonight, well, you remember this week in the Newcastle Arena. Vince Bowe for Air holding his man up against the boards. Storming in there is Colin Ward for the Bracknell Bees, number 11. Trying to win possession and get his team back in the game. They could go here. This is Junkie. Junkie with the opportunity. Oh, and a great chance there, bringing the first penalty call of the match here. And I think this will put uh, the Bracknell Bees on the power play. Well, it's the action in the net here, but I don't know if we're going to pick up Vince Boa. This is Dale Junkin driving for the net. Good job by Vince Boa to get that puck out of control, but he's the man that's in the penalty box here, and he's got a two-minute penalty for holding the stick. 
that will give the Bracknell Bees a valuable power play. Their record to date, 19.9% on the power play. They've scored 43 power play goals this season, the Bracknell Bees. But they've had 12 short-handed goals against. They'll have to be careful, but they'd rather this position on short. Well, these Air Scottish Eagles, they've got those quick, fast forwards, and that's what do, does the damage for them, and it's worked all season long. Grant and Faraccioli combine on this side. Faraccioli here again. As the Bees try to set up a chance. Here's Ryan Camus, though. The cover there, but still it's kept in. Bracknell Bees. This is Camus again coming away from the Scottish Eagles. Good puck control there by David St. Pierre. One back by Ferracioli in the neutral zone for Bracknell. We will move forward with a purpose here. This is Chris Brown setting the go. Ferracioli's in the corner. This is Joe Ferracioli. Near to the crease. Tipped away and out of the defensive zone. And that gets valuable breathing space for the Scottish Eagles. That power play clock counting down. One minute and 15 seconds remaining of that man advantage for Bracknell. Very important. He's Bracknell Beasts come out as a unit. They move the puck very well. That's been proven. They're doing it now with Grant Pellerin. He's got support from Dave Whistle back on the blue line. Ferracioli is behind him. It's the stick of Ferracioli tries to win that. The face-off will be deep in that air defensive zone now. And face-offs can be important, but the fans in this place are really up for the cup, as they say. They're enjoying it. In the middle of it, he's a stranger from Nottingham. Well, it just goes to show you that all types of ice hockey fans mixed together, but there's a pretty strong contingent from there. Didn't think he had hands that big, really. All kinds of things happen in a cup final. Including the action on the ice as the Air Scottish Eagles lead by goal to nil. But this is Colin Ward, Crawford on the blue line. Good interchange of passes, junking can't control it. Next cleared into the neutral zone. 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Crawford will knock it around the boards. This is Shane McCott. And tidy stick handling qualities. Pellerin wins it well though. Now the break is on for the bees. Dumped into the corner on the backhand by Junkin. Chase is on here for Brom Pellerin. This is Colin Ward. Dale Junkin. Number 91. Junkin shot. Charged down there by Caponara, the air captain. Eventually the puck cleared up the ice, no icing of course, because Bracknell at the moment have the man advantage. Tremendous defensive work here though by the Air Scottish Eagles, not allowing that Bracknell B side to break down that box, that defensive He's box that they the used so very, very well. Well, there wasn't a single Bracknell shot on goal during the power play, that's how effective that uh, air defence has been so far. This is Scott Young one. Young will come away, sprays the puck left, chance for Vince Bowe to get forward, slap shots off target. Still they push forward. Vince Bowe is getting onto the edge of the crease looking for the path. Greg Burke is number 23 for the Bees. This is Tom Gomes. Again cleared into the neutral zone, the chance of the break here. Harry Biet leaves it for the trailer. For Sean Barham. Now we've got a uh, high stick in there, which will take the race of that in the neutral zone. Well, there's Greg Burke, the man that uh, got in that high stick. Him and his brother Dennis playing for this club. Air coming down, two on two at this time. A little bit of a back pass there, but some good defensive work by the Bracknell Beast to pick up the one on one. Each guy had a man there. You know that you got guys picked up. If you do that in your own defensive zone. Well, a mistake there, of course, by me, because with the high stick from the defence, the face-off is deep in that zone. That's where it is now, to Mark Bernard's left. A chance on the break here for the Bees. It's dumped into the corner. The chase on this side will be from Dave Whistle, number 21. Interception by Ryan Camus. He plays it around the boards. Knocked around the boards there. Bees with some pressure. Chris Brank, good shot on goal. Good save there, but Colin Cavilla. Now the break is on here for the Scottish Eagles. Number 19 is Dennis Purdy. That's two goals in that championship clinch up there the other day. Bernard watches that carefully. This is Matt Cote. In possession for the Bees. He will flick it around the balls, but... Yet with the shot, the deflection, and almost another goal there. And, uh, well, that was desperately close. The opportunity coming the way. McHoffman on that deflection. Now, Air Scottish Eagles change and the chance for the Bees on the break. 
you see the difficulty that happens there for these goalkeepers because they anticipate the puck moving a specific way when it changes the direction on the deflection that's what throws a curve into the competition this is Sam Gallo the shortest member of the air side another chance here oh on the edge of the crease there and Mark Wolf having a great chance to score a second for air now the break the other end this is Brian Perrin number 22 middle step with the cover the air goal scorer on the edge of the crease Montanari clears the danger for air again they get to the spin bow spreading play right being pushed back but they break here they clear their defensive zone this is Pellery good support nobody following it in a little bit cautious the bees having to be at the moment in this neutral zone this is Todd Kelman Flip left good chase on here for Colin Ward Ward can't get his pass away this is Montanari for the Scottish Eagles and the goal to drift away to my right just Vince Bowe knocks the uh, goal off its sockets There's Callum Cavilla, he's the man that's got the start in this game. Well, there's Vince Boa going into his territory. Brings the old coconut off the old bar there, but uh, nonetheless, he'll get up to play another day. Callum Cavilla, he's got the start, eh, Tony, in this Express Cup. He's brought the Air Scottish Eagles so far in it. Bit of a big team decision there. You're the guy that got us here, pal. You're going to play the final. Yes, he's only missed one match, and that was when he... Uh... A little bit of damage to his finger doing the cooking at the house he shares with Jeff Hope. This is Scott Young for the Scottish Eagles, dumping it into the corner, but he can't there. It's charged down, but still they get the break. Good work here by Shaw Barham. Still the Scottish Eagles come forward. This is Jamie Steer in possession. Good work by Barham here. Catanaro flicks it into the corner. And behind the net, this is Scott Campbell. Flipped on and the zone is cleared now. The chase is on here. It's time for the Bracken Bees to break Burton to go all the way. But the Air Scottish Eagles look organised at the back there. None more so than this man, Angelo Catanara. The zone is cleared and now the chase is on here. Good work with Jamie Steer, who's got support from Barr and support there from Scott Young. Good interception from Scott Campbell. Still, the bars tonight at the moment belonging to the Air Scottish Eagles. Possession loss. This is Jamie Steer collecting loose puck. Barham again into the corner. Chases on here this time for Burt. Interception by Young. He's got support. Park goes to his left. Young goes for the shot, just on target. Now the bees, when they break, they don't seem to be able to find the stick for their own men. That eluded everyone. And now this is Ryan Kumu. Purdy in the neutral zone for the Scottish Eagles. Break is on here for Hoffman. Far side, but yet came in a little bit slow there, but he gained possession. And the Air Scottish Eagles form at the moment, well, they're showing their quality. They've got plenty of momentum in this game so far. That first goal has very much lifted them, but you see the proneness of these quick fast forwards, and they just keep driving to that net, and they add so much support to one another, and it makes it so difficult for the defensive defenseman to try and keep himself involved. Well, high up on high watching this is Mike Glazer, the Notting Panthers coach. Mike, at the moment, air looking good. Do you think uh, Bracken will come back? Well, I think air right now, are, uh, they've, they've kind of taken control of this game. They, they seem to get everyone involved offensively, and I, I, I'm impressed with their defense, Scott Young especially, uh, jumping into the play, supporting the forwards, and the, the Bracknell team is just having trouble getting out of their zone right now. Air are very hungry. Do you think, Mike, that perhaps uh, a shade of nerves in the Bracknell lineup tonight? I think uh, uh, the, the Bracknell lineup is a, is a strong lineup, but they they, uh, they they don't seem to be taking the incentive here. They don't seem to be uh, as hungry as the Air team. The Air are just a little more experienced right now at, at this type of game, I think. Chris Brandt trying to get them going, but the break on for run for move into the neutral zone, clearing the danger for the Scottish Eagles, but still they push forward. Good interchange of passes here as Kamu goes all the way. Great interception by Stewart. Captain for Bracknell Bees. This is Alan Schuler in possession for the Scottish Eagles. Sprays it left, Dino Borba. Two line pass, I think all there by the officials. Use the face off just inside that air defensive zone. There's lots of confidence going in behind there. 
Well, Air are certainly having the better of it in the battle between these and of uh, six meetings this season, but Air have won five. The thing about it is, you know, it's that consistency that the Air Scottish Eagles have shown all season long, and uh, that's been the dominant force, I feel, for them. They play very, very consistent every night. They're well. I don't think, you know, that they have sort of extraordinary nights all the time. They're just there. They know what to do. They get the job done, and they really work together as a unit. Well, they're moving with a purpose again here. And uh, great work there, but a great interception now. And the Bees have a three-on-two chance here. This is Colin Ward. Well, and uh, the onside ball there, but Foss went forward. But on this side, uh, somebody went in just a shade too quickly as Ward in possession took it over that blue line. Well, that turnover neutralized territory allows Colin Ward to go in here. Shane McCostic actually loses that puck in his feet. But unfortunately, before all that, it was an offside call. Disappointment there, a three-on-two break for the Bees, giving them an opportunity. That's what happens when you've got to have players drive into the net and you've got back checkers. Air Scottish Eagles got guys coming back. That forces those guys not to wait for that puck to cross the blue line. They've got to move forward with it. Todd Kelman in possession behind his own net for the Bees. There's four checking capabilities he's showing here, but now do the Bees get the break? The posh appears to be pulled down. Ward forces it in. This is Mark Wolf in possession. Pellerin will get the break for the Bees. He's got support from Colin Ward. Still Pellerin under pressure though. Find space here to try. It's going to go in for Kelman. The Villa watches that as it takes a rebound off the skates there and goes straight up in the air. Here they come. In the cover here. This is Sam Grillo getting back. Some good skills in case backwards and then forwards and now uses his pace. Smallest member of the air side but showing speed here, Sam Grillo. Posh shedding him away. 23 for Bracken of Bees, Greg Burke. Catanaro goes for the shot, takes a deflection. They can't clear that zone as they're pushed forward. But they still lead by a goal to nil. They've been playing just over 12 minutes of the game so far. Going middle stats goal counting. This is Scott Young. Young will get forward. And Mark Bernard has to kill that stone dead under pressure from John Parker. Well, Mark Bernard, he's been busy so far. Mike Blaisdell spoke about it. You see Scott Young, man, that guy, when he gets his opportunities, he moves forward, he jumps into the play. He's like a fourth forward. And here's the opportunity as it's led by Scott Young. But unfortunately, Greg Burke gets in there. Some great tie-up and defensive work by the Bracknell Bees to try and prevent any sort of a major shot happening on Mark Bernard. Well, Scott Young there, clearly a big threat coming forward effective for the back as well. I love that statistic about Scott Young. You see the top scoring defenseman, but none other than that, he's not scared to mix it up either. He's got plenty of penalty minutes as well. He works so hard, he needs the rest in the box. <laughs> well, slight delay while broken sticks are cleared from the ice, and Scott Young to do with it. The linesman collecting the stick and returning it to the air bench. Well, that's ever so important out of the return of sticks because a lot of the players use these aluminum shafts to go in the blades and of course the shaft costs about i don't know 30 40 pounds nowadays so you got to make sure you get that back this is catanero the air captain takes a deflection off the sticks of crawford a way to safety from the bees point of view 23 again is uh, greg burke greg burke comes in and again a great interception by that man scott young Young will dump it into the corner. Jamie Steer taken out by Burke. Well, but Steer regains possession. Support comes in from Barham. Kicked away by Bernard. This is Jamie Steer for the Scottish Eagles in the corner. Again put under pressure by Burke. Chance here, chance to Scott Young and a brilliant save by Bernard. Point back right to Scott Young, storm forward. Once again showing those attacking qualities. Scott Young again, those offensive capabilities coming forward. Look at him move, no one's on him. It's so hard to pick a guy like that up when he gets the jump on you, coming in from the point area. Wayne Crawford manages to get back to do a little bit of harm there. Unfortunately, clear shot, great save by Mark Menard. 
Well, Mark Bernard should be played overtime for his efforts tonight so far. Early goal left in, but he's recovered well. Face off to his right. This is Ran Kamu with the shot. Goaltender blinded by that. Good cover from Chris Brandt, number 25, but he's put under pressure now. As the Scottish Eagles are throwing men, but we're going to get a penalty ball here. And uh, I think that will give another power play for the Bradnell Bees. Well, that's Dennis Purdy. He was mixing it up a little bit there with Chris Brandt in the corner. He holds him back there, picks up the tripping call. As seen by Mike Grohl, but it's good fast action deep in the zone here. And this is where the battles are won and lost. Chris Brandt looking to move forward. If that penalty isn't called there, I'll tell you, plenty of room to play for the Air Scottish Eagles. Well, there's Dennis Purdy in the box for a couple of minutes. Then it's the second power play of the game for the Bracknell Bees. Remember, in their first attempt, they didn't get a shot on goal. That's Colin Cavilla, way to our right. And the air penalty killing record in all matches is the best this season among the Super League clubs. 77 is Shane McCosh in possession. Well, I think some pressure has to be applied here by the Brackle Bees. Get that puck in the zone, but they got to have the guys going after it. They've got to add some pressure on these defensemen of the Air Scottish Eagles. Can't give them the time that they're giving them deep in their zone. Well, they've given them time again, and uh, certainly there, the, Bra the Air Scottish Eagles coming away here. Ron Camus, good support there from Hoffman. They clear the puck up the ice. No ice in court, of course, because it's here that's short-handed. They change on the fly, and Bracknell will have to try and change things a little to get forward. But they have the man advantage. This time it's dumped into the corner. Dove Junkie will chase on this side. Teller in getting finds the referee Mike Rowe gets to the way, and the push can't keep it in. At the moment, Bracknell looking a shade untidy when they go forward. Real deep in the back, number 28 for the Bracknell Bees here is uh, in Crawford possession. Support from Colin Ward. Ward has whistled to his right and in front of him. Dumps it into the far corner where Tom Gomes chases it. Gomes retains possession under pressure and looks for support. Good defensive quality shown by air in front of their goal at the moment, but good work here for Bracknell from uh, Rob Stewart, their captain. 30 seconds remain. Still difficulty in finding shots, but could this man Chris Brandt produce one? He does, kicked away by Kavilla. Under pressure. This is Joe Ferracholi trying to set them going. But still there, defending depth. With the seconds counting down on that power play clock with 12 seconds remaining. The face off deep in that air zone. There's Davey Whistle. They usually have him in and around in front of the net there. He's a big, strong fella. Good forward. Once again, we've seen it all before. The Bracknell B certainly key on Chris Brandt for the big shot. Rob Stewart there just tries to create a little bit of a pick to open up the middle of the ice there to allow that shot to come in from Chris Brandt. And of course you see all kinds of bees driving for the net, hoping for a rebound. Well, another face-off. Uh, official's not happy with that one. Chris Brandt, there for the Bracknell B, certainly an important player to them, but uh, at the moment getting a real power behind his shot perhaps he needs. Power plays, they use him on point, and he has value. He does, he gets those big shots away, but once again, you've got to have guys drive into the net. These goaltenders are pretty good. They're going to pick up the first puck. It's the rebound that everyone's after, Tony. Brands again with a shot, takes the deflection away, and now clear with a broken stick strength. there, and uh, certainly Montanari playing with the stick there, but now Vince Bow with the cover. Bracknell Bees have lost that advantage, and I think it's just about one shot on target during that power play. But now, can they get forward? It's Rob Stewart knocking it off. Cover here from Vince Bone. Middle stack completes the clearance. This is Sam Grillo. He's got a break on and support. Here from Montanari. On this side is Mark Wolf. Montanari goes all the way. The goaltender Bernard. There's going to be a penalty call here. And this will give Air their first power play of the game, I think. Well, we've got a hooking call going in here. Mark Montaneri turns on the speed in the wheels. Rob Stewart gets the old stick in there. With a glove, there you go. He knows he's not going to catch him, but he's got to prevent this guy from moving forward because he's a prolific goal scorer. 
Well, the chance for those prolific goal scorers of Ayr to capitalise here on the foul play. They've got uh, a good record in the league. Now they have the man advantage. Rendell B, number 16. Two minutes for Wilkins time at 16-0-1. Rink announcer joining Rob Stewart in the penalty box. Now Brackle Bees could find themselves under pressure in this effective power play unit of the Air Scottish Eagles. But they can clear it up the ice. This is Alan Schuler. Mark Wolf will move to his left in front of him. Sam Grillo's there as well. Switches play to Matt Hoffman. Hoffman will dump it into the corner. Grillo chases. This is Mark Wolf in possession. Grillo. Grillo's got a chance. Here goes! his ninth power play goal of the season the Scottish Eagles fans are singing they're in front 2-0 while well, Sam Gerlow realizes he's got an opportunity to drive directly for the net from the goal Matt Hoffman does a good job in front of the net okay. to prevent Brackle oh, defense from moving in and obstructing any opportunity that he may have he just finds his hole Sam and he beats Mark Bernard a little bit of a gap down there Lacking support deep in the zone, and Grillo takes advantage of it. He just drives directly for the net. Well, that's twice tonight. Mark Bernard's been beaten on that side, Bob, and that man, Sam Grillo, getting that second one. Well, that was a great shot by Sam Grillo because if you can just imagine the angle that you've got to shoot at there, Tony, coming in from the corner, you've really got to pick your spot. This is Shane McCosh for the Bracknell Bees. They now really have a battle on their hands in this Express Cup final. Air Scottish Eagles, already winners of two trophies, and now leading by two goals to nil. First power play goal of the night coming from Sangrelo. Remember, Joe Middlestad it was that put the Scottish Eagles in front. This is Sean Barham in possession. Cleared into the neutral zone. Jeff Johnston. Chance here now, and oh, right across the crease he went. Cavilla read it well, but it's still over. Cavilla somehow sees that deflection away, wide of his goal. I'm not sure the goaltender for Air knew quite where that was. Air could get the break here again. Good work by Catalano, the captain, big hit there, but a chance here for Bernard to be beaten again, but still they can stall forward. Catalano with the shot, just off target. Bernard going giddy in goal there for the Bracknell Bees. This is John Parker for the Scottish Eagles. The trailer is Byron. Good defensive cover by Colin Ward getting back. Big hit on Ward by Purdy. Purdy gains possession of the puck. Still the Bracknell Bees in possession now. Can they convert this into profit by goals? Middlestad is back there to cover. They break again. Yes, yeah, Scottish Eagles in confident mood here tonight. Mark Bernard being put under pressure, but now can the breeze break? Just a minute and a half of the period remaining, and Bernard having to clear again under pressure. Brian Pellerin can't clear the zone, and Bernard again has to kill it stone dead this time to produce a face off in his zone. While we could go down to join Nick Rothwell ringside with a man pretty familiar in this Newcastle ring. Justin, uh, here on your day off watching the game. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Good atmosphere in our uh, arena here. It's good to see two teams go at it. So, uh, what do you think? Got two nothing minute, minute and 20 seconds left. What can Bracknell do? Well, Bracknell seems to be doing pretty good. It looks like they could uh, use a little more pressure, in, you know, in, in Air's defense, and um, it's been a pretty good game. Thanks a lot, Justin. Thank you, Nick. Justin Duber, but of course, the Newcastle Cobras player. Among many ice hockey players watching this Express Cup final here, with the Air Scottish Eagles leading by two goals to nil. Sangrelo scored that second goal. Could he get a third? Good defensive cover there. Well, into the neutral zone it goes. Somehow, the yeah, Scottish Eagles still looking in control. This is Mark Montanari with a minute of the period remaining. Chance for a break here for Chris Brandt. Brandt's pass goes astray again. Crawford, though, covers and finds his man, Frederick Choli. Dave Whistle will knock it into the corner. Brandt will trace it. So too will Alan Schuler for air. Brandt gets it back. Can't keep it in the zone. Again, another attack breaks down for the Bracknell Bees. 
Will this be their last attack of the period? Just over half a minute remaining. This is Dave Whistle, number 21. Again, air disciplined and effective on the blue line. This is Matt Cote for the Bees. Finds his man Brant. Danger snuffed out there again. Tough work by the Air Scottish Eagles on their blue line. Gives the break now here to John Parco. Parco slap shot only just off target. And the puck sails out with just over five seconds remaining on the period. Here's that shot coming in from John Parco. Just takes the deflection. But there you see Mark Bernard and how far out of the net he goes to try and cut that angle down. No other option here for Parco on the shot. And of course, that allows that goalkeeper to show a little confidence, come out of his net, cut the angle down. So with just seconds remaining, air lead by two goals to nil. And certainly a fair reflection of play in this first period. Face off. Eventually, the whistle will go as the puck goes up the ice. Winter goes the first period of this Express Cup final ends with Air Scottish Eagles seemingly in control. They went in front of just 36 seconds, the first goal of the season for Joey Middlestat. When Sam Grillo scored on the power play from Mark Wolf's assist, that tied it up at two goals to nil. The Scottish Eagles in control. There's live rugby union coming up on Saturday. It's the Tetley's Bitter Cup quarter-final clash between Northampton and Newcastle. Live rugby union Saturday, 1.30 on Sky Sports 2. Right now, though, we're in Newcastle for the Express Cup final. The Air Scottish Eagles taking on the Bracknell Bees and Air getting a very early lead. 1-0 after just 36 seconds, 2-0 after the first period. And there you can see that really it has been Air's period. 13 shots on goal compared to Bracknell's five. One well, outstanding team performance, but one man who we're not used to seeing in nets so much is Colm Cavilla. Normally, of course, we see Rob Dobson, but the Express Cup is his competition. He's talking to Nick Rothwell. Colm, things really going your way right now? Yeah, right now our team played a great period. Uh, so far, everything's clicking our way, and hopefully that'll be, continue to be the case. Mark Bernard, your opposite number, let in a goal pretty quick. What, what are we going through his mind right now? Uh, that's tough always off the bat. You always want to get a good start and get that first shot. I mean, it was a tough shot, so uh, he's probably just trying to regroup and, you know, just get focused on the rest of the game, I would imagine. And we've told everyone this tournament is yours. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, the coach just gave it to me uh, kind of right off the bat, and uh, i just like to see it through to the end here and we'll come out on top. And uh, how do you guys feel, you know, tonight, 40 minutes, uh, keep it the way it's going? You guys got to treble. Yeah, I mean, that would be very nice. I think, you know, we just got to keep playing our game, and if we don't get away from that, I, you know, we've been successful with it all year. Hopefully we can be again tonight. Thanks a lot, Colm. Good luck. You're welcome. Bye. The yeah, Scottish Eagles netminder, Colm Pavilla, talking to Nick Rothwell there. Mike Blaisdell's with him. Mike, he hasn't been troubled nearly as much as Mark Bernard, has he? No, uh, Bernard is, is, is getting a good workout tonight. They're uh, air are so hungry on the puck, and uh, you now I can see why, you know, you watch them up here. You just see how good they really are. They, they do everything well. They, uh, they, they press all the time. And what a fantastic way to start a championship final there. 36 seconds, Joey Middlestad getting what really, for Mark Bernard, was a very unfortunate goal. I think Middlestad, he, he pinches in along the line, and uh, he just he, he just tees it up. He has a little bit of time here, and I think it might have wobbled on uh, Bernard, but it's, it's not a great goal. Uh, you know, I mean, the goalie probably should have had that, but it, I not think... Not great for uh, his confidence as well. I think it knuckleballs here a little bit. I think it's spinning, and it might have dipped a little on him, and, uh, you know, the puck takes, uh, takes, takes funny spins in the air sometimes. We're used to saying that Mark Bernard is perhaps one of the better netminders uh, in the Super League. He redeemed himself somewhat with the, the Scott Young chance, didn't he? Which came a little bit later. Yeah, you know, uh, the air are always putting in pressure, but their defense are always ready to jump into the play. You know, you watch this. Scott Young will come out of nowhere from out high, and there he's come in. Someone should be marking him a little closer, but great save by Bernard, but a uh, dangerous play by the Air Eagles here. Bracknell in that period there looked a little bit hesitant, a little bit tentative, and as we saw 13 shots to five from Air, it was no surprise that the second goal came up from Sam Grolier. This was a good goal. Yeah, it's a power play goal, and uh, they work the puck very well out of the corner here. They, uh, uh, Grolier gets, gets a loose puck. The, the puck comes back to him here, and he sees he's got a little time to go to the net, so he just starts to skate. He comes with some speed, and he snaps it quick, and I, I don't know if it went off the post or, or maybe through the goaltender's goal legs, but 
you know, just shows he he, he gets skating. He's got a, a little bit of open ice here, and he just snaps it. And I think it might go off the post here and in, or no. I think it hit the it hit the goaltender and went upstairs. But uh, just shows he, he he went with speed to the net and, and shot the puck. Now we heard uh, Nick Rothwell saying that he heard Jim Furichek saying after the first goal, "Okay, guys, calm it down. It's just a normal game. You've got to get back in there." What's he saying now after the first period? Well, I think he he probably wants to get them fired up a little bit and say, you know, listen, guys, that's uh, that first period's out of the way. Uh, we're two nil down. They're going to have to come at air a little bit and enforce some turnovers. They're right now. They're sitting back. They're letting air take charge of the game. But uh, you know, it's easier said than done. Air is a fabulous hockey team. They they're, they're strong in every department. Uh, Bracken will have a tough job ahead of him. Jim Lynch presumably is just saying more of the same, guys. Well, last Sunday saw the last Super League games of the weekend, of the, the year even. Of course, the Air Scottish Eagles were crowned champions the weekend before. Nick Rothwell talks us through the final weekend. The Manchester Storm secured a runners-up spot in the Super League on Saturday with a convincing 6-1 victory over the Sheffield Steelers. A performance which must make them one of the favourites to win the playoffs at their home venue in March. We have a really nice feel about ourselves. The guys have confidence and there's a tremendous amount of togetherness in the locker room. And, you know, we play hard and you're not going anywhere in the playoffs if you can't compete and play hard. And we do that and we do it within a pretty nice system and the guys have really done well. It's been a great season so far. We just like to keep it going. Amazing Stoke were stuck with seventh place, whatever the result on Saturday. But the Bison were out to finish the regular season on a high. A superb performance from new signing Andre Rasico saw him face 49 shots. But the Panthers took the game to OT. And Craig Neenhouse got the winner to line nodding him up for a fourth place spot in the league. A 12,000 strong crowd at the Ninex Arena saw the storm continue their winning ways and make it nine on the trot, equaling a Super League record. The Bracknell Bees hit the twine six times, but never looked like getting the two points that would have moved them into the top half of the table. Jim Fjordchuk had to settle for fifth in the final standing, but heads into the playoffs in a confident mood. Things have been going well for us. We've tried to get on a roll and create some momentum going into the playoffs, and we just have to treat it as such. It's you know, one game to the next. Uh, be ready to play and get the job done. The league champions, the Air Scottish Eagles, found themselves a goal down after the first period of their final game of the regular season against Sheffield. But not for long. Matt Hoffman leveled it all in the second. And Mark Montanari got his second of the night to seal the win, leaving the Steelers despondent as they begin the defense of their playoff title. Hardest disappointing season continued when they lost 5-3 to the team that had propped up the league table all season. Newcastle's opening goals came from the Northeastern local boy Jonathan Weaver. It could have been worse though for the Devils but for two late goals from Matulik and this one from Steve Moria. Paul Heavey was left wondering how the Devils got what it takes to win anything this season. The playoffs is a new season and some people call it a, a bit of a war. I mean, it's, it's a no prisoners type of hockey game and you have to be ready to, to pay the price. And obviously, you have to be ready to get in there and, and take the hit and, and make a hit, etc. And, and do whatever it takes. And, you know, our goaltending's been good. I think if we can play, tighten up in more D, you know, the, the, some of the lapses we're having, the forwards keep pep on the goalies and hopefully a few of those pucks are stuck in the net for us. So that is the way the Super League finished for the 97-98 season. The Air Scottish Eagles champions, Manchester, getting in there for second spot. Of course, the Newcastle Cobras rock bottom on just 15 points. Basingstoke with just above them, which means that the playoff places have all been decided. There we have Group A and Group B. Group A, of course, containing the Nottingham Panthers, Mike Blaisdell's team. Mike, you happy with that group there? No, I'm not. <laughs> They're <laughs> all good. because of number one, the Eskimos. They're all Eagles. very good. I think, uh, you know, Air in the group. Sheffield are a good team, and Newcastle are coming on, too. Of course, the, the top two from each group will then face each other in the semi-finals. Well, Mike, we say that the playoffs are like a whole new season. How do you approach them? I think 
Yeah, you got to, you know, the, the slate is wiped clean. It looks like Aaron might have all three trophies in the bag. So everyone, you know, the other seven teams have got to try to get something. But it's, uh, you know, it's it's exciting, the playoffs. And, and, and uh, you know, speaking on, or for ourselves personally, we're healthy now. And I think uh, we got some guys back in the lineup. We're excited Because you've got Robbins back, which obviously uh, we saw from last weekend makes a big difference to you, doesn't it? Well, Robbins is a, is a, is a great net miner. And uh, Scott O'Connor's played very well in, in, in his absence because of the fact is Scotty had to go in the net with a, with a bunch of our regulars missing. So it was tough on Scotty. Just briefly on Cardiff, they've had a particularly poor season. Of course, they were the title holders last season. Is that because they've had a, a weak team this year or weak performances, or is it just indicative of the strength of the other teams in the league? I think the league has, has been very, very strong, and Cardiff have had some injury problems themselves, and, uh, you know, I think they've been a little bit inconsistent like a lot of the other teams. I mean, the only team that we can really say has been consistent has been there. I mean, Manchester now are looking very good as well. I wouldn't want to hit them right now. They're, they're, they're in very good form. What's your surprise bet, then, as an outsider for the playoffs? Newcastle people are tipping would you go with that well Newcastle have had such a terrible year up till now that, that that now they may just say listen let's get some out of these playoffs and they and they showed in Cardiff their last game that they, they mean business and I think uh, they're gonna be they're they're a dark horse thanks very much Mike well the playoffs of course start this weekend right now though it's the Express Cup final in the Newcastle arena the Air Scottish Eagles doing their fans proud in that first period this man here obviously uh, supporting air with his Scottish face there a young moose there with his popcorn waiting for the second period. He's seen his team go 2-0 up in the first period. Sam Grolio getting the second. It really was Ayers period. Join us for the second one after the break. Live football coming up this weekend. Two huge top-of-the-table clashes. First up on Saturday morning at a very early time of 10.30 on Sky Sports 1. Chelsea taking on the current champions, Manchester United. Then on Sunday afternoon from 12 on Sky Sports 3, Nottingham Forest take on Middlesbrough. Live football this weekend on Sky Sports. Right now, though, we're in Newcastle. It's the Express Cup final, and after the first period, the Air Scottish Eagles, already the holders of two trophies this season, are leading the Bracknell Bees by two goals to nil. Well, face-off in the second period is going to be underway very shortly. But first of all, Nick Rothwell has an interested spectator for us. Gabby, I'm down here with Christopher Hunt, the managing director of the London Ice Hockey franchise. Chris, you up here watching the final? Well, I'm here to check out the competition for next year. I think it's been a great game tonight. We're certainly pleased to see a couple of great teams fighting it out tonight. And I think it's setting the stage for our entrance into the league next year, which we're very excited about with the new London team joining the Ice Hockey Super League. How have things been going in the uh, building process for the club? Things are progressing right on target. We're making some uh, renovations down to the London Arena, get it suitable for a uh, first-class venue for ice hockey, and we're also making some progress on the team front, so we'll be ready to go for the coming season. What do you think of this Express Cup as, uh, as uh, one of the, uh, the great things for, for these teams to play for? I think it's great. I think what you see tonight is just another opportunity for a couple teams to really go out and you know, win one of these cups, which I know means a lot to the players and it means a lot to the fans. I think there's a great atmosphere here tonight and it's certainly something we'll be aspiring to in London. Now, I know obviously the London connection, you're real strong in there, but uh, who are you rooting for tonight? Well, you know, Nick, I can't really say that tonight. I'm rooting for a great game and I think that's what everyone's getting, so I'll stick with that. Sit on the bench, eh? Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Nick. Well, 15 minutes in that dressing room. It's a very crucial time. You've been there, Mike Blaisdell. What was Jim Furyk saying to his team? Well, he's got to get some uh, fire under their uh, tails a little bit. He's got to get them going in and, and take some chances. I mean, air two goals against air is a lot to come back on. Like, it's not going to be easy. They're going to have to get in there and get some shots and, and test this goalie. They've got to shoot the puck a little more. They're 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 hesitating a little bit. They got to, you know, you see middle stats goal, long shot in in funny angle. Uh, knuckleball on the goaltender, maybe uh, Brack will have to try a few of those long range shots. We saw them against Sheffield in their semi-final, of course, on Sky Sports. They look solid, they look confident. Would it be wrong to say perhaps they're showing a little bit too much respect to Air at the moment? I think, no, I think you hit the nail on the head there. They're, uh, you know, Air are just so good in every department and, and Brack will seem a little bit tentative out there. I think uh, maybe they got the jitters uh, out of the way now and, and they're going to open things up a bit because they have some very good uh, players up front that can score some goals. And I really like their defenseman, Makash, who's uh, capable of doing some of the things that Scott Young does for air. Thanks very much, Mike. Well, this is the stage where their great players can shine. Let's go over to our commentary team for the second period. Bob Carroll, but first, Tony Millard. Well, certainly plenty to talk about, but on the ice, it's the Air Scottish Eagles that lead by two goals to nil. Joey Middlesex's first goal of the season, sending them on their way. Sam Grillo's power play goal, making it 2-0. 
Now the second period, Mike Rowe, our referee, drops the puck. The face-off, the video leads one here by the Air Scottish Eagles, who in this second period, in the lighter strip, defend the goal to our left. They dump the puck into the corner. It's Mark Bernard, their goaltender, who knocks it around the boards, but again, one back for air, this time by Jamie Steer. Bees, though, eventually clearing it into the neutral zone. Clearly, from Bracknell B's point of view, they could do with an early goal. But the attack now is mounted here by John Parco for the Scottish Eagles. On the far side is Jamie Steer. And the rebound almost landed on the end of his stick. The break is on here for Colin Ward. Dumped up the ice, waved on by the officials. And for the Bees, an important few minutes, I think, Bob. They want to try and get themselves back into this game, Tony. There's the net going off its moorings. And uh, I noticed Mark Bernard, when you just asked me that question, he was plugging away trying to get that net back on again, but I guess it never eventually did. Here's Mark Bernard. He's looking around behind there. He's just not happy at all. Well, I don't know if Mike Gross saw that whole thing, but he obviously, you can see that the net is off now. And he's looking at the referee, but of course the whistle isn't being blown there, so he dumps it right off to make sure he gets proper attention. I think referee Mike Rowe took that in the spirit it was intended. He realised perhaps he didn't see it in the first place. And Mark Bernard, well, he thought, well, I'll exaggerate it a bit. Well, I must admit, though, I thought that Mark Bernard put it actually back on because it was just the one side of the net was off. But, hey, you know, the game's the game, boys. Rob Stewart knocks it around the boards. The chase is on on the far side for Chris Brandt. Good backhanded work. This is Joe Ferracholi for the Bees. Can they get back in the game? Bees running a serious attack here, and Pavilla has to be alert to that one. Chris Brandt, shot of the turn. Matt Cote can't keep it in, and that takes it into the neutral zone. But now, are the Bees more determined as Chris Brandt knocks it forward? They whistle to control that puck, and again in the neutral zone. But here's Rob Stewart, number 16, for the Bracknell Bees. Round behind the net, Joe Ferracholi is 47. He's looking for support. Tries to find Dave Whistle. Whistle is taken into the boards, tight there by Mike Montanari. The puck again cleared into the neutral zone. Charles, a break here. Good work here by Sam Grenoe. Good this is Grenoe! second goal of the game. His 51st goal for the Air Scottish Eagles. And Sam Grenoe has made it in three. Brackle nil. Well, here's the story about the fast skating forwards of the Air Scottish Eagles. But there's a communication mix up here because Matt Cote doesn't realize that Sam Grillo is in okay, hot pursuit on the other side the there. So it becomes a two-horse race. Rob Stewart, Sam Grillo. Sam Grillo wins it. And when he gets in in front of that net, he commits Mark Bernard. Once he's down, he just goes around him and puts the puck in. I thought it was great by Grillo just to lift that puck up and get it around Rob Stewart to create the scoring opportunity. Super goal. 98 seconds into the second period, and Sam Gallo makes it 3-0 to the Air Scottish Eagles. And now for the Bracknell Bees, the talk is even tougher. Well, they're 3-0 down, and uh, Mike Blaisdell mentioned it's hard to come back. Two goals against the Air Scottish Eagles, never mind three. But there's got to be an answer to it, and I'm sure that Jimmy Fierchuk, the Bracknell coach, will still try and inspire his players. It's not over yet. And won't defeat, take defeat easily. It's a coach at a couple of uh, college finals back at home, but now, well, good work there by Colin Cavilla to keep that out of the way. It's, uh, now Bracknell storm forward, but still, Air maintain their discipline. Montanaro knocks it around the boards into the neutral zone. The chase is on here for Bracknell. Number 28 is Wayne Crawford. Not Bernard has to be careful with that one. They clear their defensive zone. Again, it's knocked in as they clear the zone. Now Air can get in and chase. This is Scott Campbell for the Bracknell Bees. Again, Air keep another chance here for Carrie Beer. It's got a man on the edge of the crease here. Dennis Purdy's chance. Purdy, another chance and a brilliant save with his feet by Mark Bernard. This is Scott Young. Still they go forward. Bernard saves again. Oh, and again. The goaltender put under pressure there by the eager Air forwards plus Scott Young. This is Young. Angelo Catanara, the air captain, combines well with Scott Young. Flipped into the neutral zone. And the icing call will take the action back down to the air defensive zone. And Mark Bernard having to earn his money here tonight. Although you're down and out, Tony, it's never over until it's over. But what a save here by Mark Bernard. 
because he stacks those pads. Look at that. He makes a last valid effort there to try and keep that puck out. Once again, those Air Scottish Eagles keep persevering. Busy night for the 29 year old from Ontario. Face off then, deep in the air, Scottish Eagles defensive zone. Here at the moment, well, looking a good bet for trophy number three this season. Remember, they've already won the league title, and they've won the Benson Hedges Cup. And now Colin Covilla, their standby goaltender, is producing the goods here tonight. Straight off the draw, though, but it's just a basic puck that goes back to the netminder, Callum Covilla. He makes no mistake, hangs on to it. Well, Jim Lynch, we said so many times this season, should be happy. He doesn't change his expression at all, does he? Got through a few bits of gum this season. Face off. Great save there from Colin Ward by the goaltender. Colin Cavilla, snapshot getting in there from the uh, Bracknell centre man. But now the break is on here for Vince Bovray. Bose goes all the way, kicked away by Bernard. Ron Pellerin tries to clear it into the neutral zone and succeeds for the Bracknell Bees. One back here, this is Jamie Steer knocking it around the boards. A kosh, like Blaisdell spoke about during the break, trying to get his team going. They get the break on here, this is Brian Pellerin. Pellerin knocks it back, got support two line and pass though. Two Gives us the opportunity to have a look at what's happened so far. was Joey Middlestack in the opening minute that put Air Scottish Eagles in front of his first goal of the season. Sam Gallo on the power play is called goal number two, and that's how it laid at the end of the first period. But here Gallo grabbed his second of the game in the opening period of this, or opening session of this period, and Air Scottish Eagles lead 3-0. The action again, this is uh, good support here. Mark Montanari, this is Gallo again looking for his hat trick. The eager Scottish Eagles with Montanari knocked into the corner by Wolf. Grillo connects the loose puck on the backhand. This is Rob Stewart trying to get Bracknell moving. Chris Brack gets forward. Broken up on the blue line and Wolf's got the break here. Montanari to his left, Grillo in front of him. Chance here, great save by Bernard, but still the puck is loose. Good cover from Cote and the Bees move away. Spiricholi spreads it left, this is Brank with a shot, great save to Villa, right pad. Bees looking to get back into this game, a mounted decline for Jim Farchuk's men. This is Sam Gallo. Good work here for Mark Wolf with a slap shot, charged down. The break is on, we've got a clear run here for Spiricholi, but Air gets back, one, two, three men on him in no time at all. That was some cover there from the Scottish Eagles, Bob. Well, that's the importance of skating, you know, and this is one of the things that the Air Scottish Eagles do so very well. They had players coming off the bench as well, Tony. Fresh legs, and that always makes an inspiration, doesn't it, when you're trying to catch somebody? Well, at times tonight, the Scottish Eagles look like they've got eight men out there instead of six. Still there in possession. Good one. Well, they look for the penalty call and don't get it. Now the Bees have the break here. This is Burr combining with Brandt. Grant feigns the shot, but the offside call as uh, Tom Gobes went in just too quickly. The offside call here. I think that's Greg Burke on the far side. No, it isn't Greg Burke in the middle there, but once again, the hesitation. And as a result, Tom Gomes goes offside, and the Bracknell Bees are forced to come outside the blue line to create that faceoff. You know, it's that hesitation on that puck, though, Tony, and it gets you every time. Well, the Air Scottish Eagles continue to move like a well-oiled machine, and the chance is on here again. Bernard, well, he's happy to see that one go just wide. This is Scott Young for air. Skips inside one, inside two, goes for the snapshot. Cover from the Brackle Bees from Greg Burke, number 23. The body's piling, and air winning back. This is Carrie Viet for air, using his skates to move the puck away from the boards. Purdy gets it out of the blue line. Shot goes in there from Cappanaro. Fans are yelling here as the puck turn up in the corner and they get the face off eventually again deep in that Bracknell zone. No, 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 
Matt Hoffman, the new father. The Air Scottish Eagles, he's concerned there. I think he had an opportunity right in front of the net. Looking for a bit of a tripping or interference call there, but no is the call. That man's happy, Sam Gerlow. Well, all the fans are here, and they're enjoying themselves. Well, I think this is a tremendous spectacle for British Ice Hockey, the Express Cup in its inaugural year. But it's certainly helping hockey back up here in the Northeast, yeah. Big night for the people of Newcastle here in ice hockey. They'll have to clear that zone now. This is Joey Middlestaff, pleased with his open goal tonight. Kept in by McCosh. Now a chance for the Bees here. McCosh will get forward. Can't get possession. Good work. Here on the break, they clear it of the neutral zone. The break is on here now. Yet Borbers on the edge of the crease. Can't quite get the stick on that as it comes across. Well, we've got some more news ringside from that effervescent Nick Rothwell. Yeah, guys, you know, uh, just at, towards the end of that first period, Kalman from Bracknell, he got a cut on his right eye. He got uh, a little bit cut above it and below. He's had, had to take one stitch, one stitch above it and two below. There you can see. And, uh, you know, we saw these guys getting stitched up uh, last game, Dale Junkin having to get a few and Ken Priestley from Sheffield, but they always uh, seem to get back up there. Todd Kalman will have some shiner tomorrow. It's good to see, though, those guys go in, they get the medical attention they need, and they're right back out on the ice trying to support their team. But still, air push forward. We've got a chance here for Jamie Steer. Great defensive cover there, provided by McCosh. He's working hard, but still air keep it in. Parker gets the opportunity. Kelman goes into the corner. This is Brian Pellerin. Good backhanded pass to let McCosh get forward, but again, on that blue line, air lets nobody go by. This is Jamie Steer. Parker with him. Chance for John Parker. Great opportunity. Great save by Bernard. Kept it tight, but still they storm forward. Ron Camus loses his feet, but it matters. Number nine for the Scottish Eagles there is Jamie Steer. A little bit of an archy bargy breaking out. So far, not much of this tonight. Much of it for Hawkman. Well, Colin Ward, I think it is, and uh, big Sean Byram of the Air Scottish Eagles. That's where it all starts. Byram trying to set his place there. Gets the cross check going. This is one of the great things about the Air Scottish Eagles. They drive to the net so very well, but you've got to say this much, you know. Colin Ward there, he makes sure that he's stuck with his man. He doesn't want him to get loose. Well, Sean Barham and Colin Ward both going into the box for slashing coincidental minors. Two minutes each, okay, and we're now staying four on four with each team minus a man. Two minutes for slashing, also a penalty against Air Scottish Eagle number 16, Sean Barham. Plenty of space on this ice for four on four. And the bees use it. This is Joe Perrichoe in possession in his own zone. The stick handler. Large number of assists already this season. Can he add to that? This is Rob Stewart. Choey now in support. On the blue line is Matt Cote. He loses possession here. And there's going to be a penalty call in a minute because... Uh, and that's going to reduce the numbers of the ice quite considerably. And the Bracknell Bees will lose, I think, Matt Cote there. And they'll be down to three men on the ice. Well, Matt Cote on a trip and call. But if this doesn't happen for Matt Cote... Mark Wolf has got plenty of room in front of him there. And he's going in one-on-one -on -one against Mark Bernard with all kinds of time. So that's a choice you got to make there, and I think Mr. Cote made the right one. In football, they call it a professional foul. Well rewarded. Save so perhaps another goal, but now plenty of room on the ice here. Bracknell, the least penalised team in the Super League. But now they've got two men in the box. And they have three outskaters against four from the Air Scottish Eagles who lead 3-0. Well, in the Air Scottish Eagles, they're putting all their fast horses out there. You got Montaneri, you got Alan Schuler. He's known for his skating skills. And of course, we all know about Sam Grillo and the way that he can move out there. This is Mark Wolf combining well with Montanari. Good work by Sam Grillo with two goals to his name already. Can he make it three? Montanari to his left. Back on the blue line, we've got Mark Wolf. 
Space being created by Schuler and Bernard has to be tight on that one. As Guerrero came desperately close to getting a hat trick now, and more Archie Barge breaks out with Rob Stewart at the helm for Bracknell. Well, when you only got three men on the ice, you play what you call a triangle, and that triangle will rotate. But Mark Montaneri, he comes out of the corner with a puck because he's got all kinds of time. Brillo in front of the net there, but how about that save by Bernard there? Right out in front, stacks those pads. And I'm afraid if you're going to score on me, you got to go upstairs. But that's a smart move by Mark Montaneri, only because he knows that Grolo's in front of the net, and he's going to have a scoring opportunity. You've got to break that advantage, man advantage down. Sam Grolo eagerly looking for that hat trick. Knocked around the boards, right up the other end. No ice and call, of course, because Brackle are down to three men. And it's uh, air on the power play now as they come away. Good work here by Mark Wolf with the puck. He's got Alan Schuler as the trailer on the blue line. Montanari's this side. They've got plenty of space and plenty of time on their side, the Scottish Eagles. Playing the puck around well. Comes across to Schuler. Schuler can't get the shot away. Below can't control it when it matters. But still Brack will put under pressure. Burt will clear it. Knocked up ice quickly there by Jeff Johnston. Both teams having a chance to change. That's a big advantage for the Brackle Bees. Not only killing time there, but it allows their players to make that change that they need because they're getting tired out there. John Parker steps inside his man. Feeds Alan Schuler going ahead down the boards and Parker gets the loose puck back. He creates space. Chance here for Scott Young with a shot. Bernard with a save. Point blank range. Rebound knocked away. And now the break is on. We've got a two on one for Bracknell here with McCosh on the far side. McCosh! Brilliant save by Colin Davila. As McCosh stormed forward, that was sheer brilliance by the young goaltender for the Scottish Eagles. Alan Schuler, he pins in on this particular play. It enables the Bracknell Bees to come out on a two on one. Mike Blaisdell spoke about it. Shane McCosh, if Brackle's going to be effective, this guy's an offensive defenseman. He's got to come forward. And what a pass by Junkin. Cavella, huge save. There's Junkin. He's smart with that biscuit. Look at how he finds the hole there. Picks it apart from Scott Young and enables Shane McCosh to get that shot away. In a little bit close. Nonetheless, great scoring opportunity. Well, Colin Cavilla, as we're nearly halfway through this game, already has two shutouts to his name in the Express Cup. I wonder if this one will be number three. But the power play with the Scottish Eagles on the break here now. Men back on the ice, the first two. Sean Barron's back, Colin Ward is back. Still power play air, though, because uh, down below us, Matt Cote is still in the penalty box. Which allows Bracknell to knock the puck up the ice. No icing, of course, and Vince Bow is number six for the Scottish Eagles now in possession. Michael Jack, this is Scott Young. Cote is back on the ice. Scott continues to storm forward. Barron with the shot just off target. Here's Jamie Steer. His effort is charged down. McCosh getting forward there. Certainly Shane McCosh so far tonight perhaps doesn't deserve to be on the losing side. This is Todd Kelman. Kelman forces it around to McCosh. He eases it out of that defensive zone, but Scott Young will knock it back into the corner. Kelman, helped by his goaltender Mark Bernard, will send McCosh away on this side. McCosh this time knocks it high up and it will drop behind Ron Camus into the corner. Telepathic the passing at the moment from here. The inspiration there, the Bracklebees dumping that puck deep in the zone but high, allowing less time for air defence to move with that puck. Well, Ron Camus almost getting forward as Bob was talking there, Bernard didn't know much about that as Camus skated powerfully into that zone but now the break is on here this is uh, Chris Branch but again broken up on the blue line where Ayers line of defenseman is so effective when it matters Mike Blaisdell is watching this Mike since the interval the margin has been extended by the Scottish Eagles can Bracknell come back from this well there it's not looking uh, that, that that's a real uh, possibility I think uh, Air. Air's got so much speed and strength, uh, and they're so strong in the puck. Uh, uh, Sam Grolo there showed that, that turn of foot that he has. Uh, just a minute ago, uh, Ryan Kumo jumped into the play and had a great opportunity. The air defense are like uh, two extra forwards out there. They're, a, they're an excellent hockey team, and they're, and they're really taking it to Bracken right now. How much is this down to confidence? I think it's a great deal down to confidence. Uh, air are, are, are obviously the most confident side in the Super League, and they, and they just go from strength to strength. 
Well, certainly air on top and now in possession, breaking into neutral zone. Mike Blaisdell, of course, the coach of Nottingham Panthers, which is a neutral here tonight. But this time, the face-off will revert down that. in the Bracknell zone once again. Well, I don't know who's the happier of the two sides, but I think it would be the air Scottish Eagles. Jimmy Fierchuk knowing that he's potentially running out of time here. He's got to pull something out of the bag and get his Bracknell Bees on the scoreboard. Well, he's looking at his bit of paper there, but that man there, Jim Lynch, certainly has at the moment very little to worry about. Set that chewing gum. Face off is uh, deep in the Bracknell zone, but uh, Reisman Paul Branch there says, well, let's change the personnel. Let's get on with it. There's the position which truly reflects the score, I think. Air have been dominating. And again, shot goes in for Borba. Chance here for Johnson on the break for Bracknell. He can't clear it. Support from Gomes, but again, they're pinned back. This time, Greg Burke has to do the work behind his zone. Uh... Again, Bernard lies at the back of his head for that one. Whacked around the boards by Greg Burke. Into the neutral zone, the chase is on here for his brother, Dennis. Dennis, big hit there from Scott Young, takes Dennis Burke into the boards. And Young clears the danger. Puck disappears out into the crowd. Well, they are certainly the happier at the moment. And, uh, well, Scott Young known for his offensive capabilities, but have a look at this one, boy. There you are, lines his man up. Make sure he takes him out of the play. You're going to come into my zone, I want you to feel it a little bit. Well, I wouldn't want to bang into that nearly 14 stone of Scott Young on a dark night, what would you? <laughs> Not only that, but the speed that he comes at you, you know, you just don't know away. There'll be two hits, him hitting you, Tony, and you hitting the ground. Well, good work here. Chance here for Mark Wolf. Wolf sets up Grillo almost for his hat-trick there, but he's uh, taken out on the Bracknell defensive cover. Improving as we go on now. But still, Grillo gets possession. He may be small, but he's lively and skillful. Bo dumps it into the corner. This is Todd Kelman. Montanari in possession. This is Mark Wolf for Air. Remember, Air in the lighter strip at the moment, leading by three goals to nil. Almost a rare mistake by Vince Bo, but covering him up is Joey Middlestad. Again, the break here now. This is Doug Junkin. Junkin shot off target. That will come out to Sam Grillo, who clears the defensive zone. And as far as Kelman. Kelman combines with McCosh, and Bracknell start moving forward positively. Cavilla will watch that around the boards and help it on. Ferracholi knocks it back on the backhand. This is Joe Middlestead kicking it around the boards with his skate. Mark Wolf is number eight for there. Clears the zone. Rob Stewart knocks it back in. The men in front of him clear the zone, the officials wave it on. The action continues, this is Stewart. Good spell for the Bracknell Bees at the moment on this dump and chase game. This is Chris Brandt. Whistle on the edge of the crease, Joe Joe Ferracholi for the Bracknell Bees! Grabs his 15th goal of the season! And Joe Ferracholi gives hope to Jim Parchak's men. Early 3-1. Well, these are the big offensive threats. They're perverse, though, because usually it's the other way around. It's virtually given the pass, but on this occasion, it's Chris Brand. Good heads-up play here as the Bees drive for the net. Air doing a good job there defensively as well. We can't take that away from them. They got guys back. But the excellent passing, and Joe Ferraccioli gets the Bees on the scoreboard. Well, there's Joe Ferraccioli's record, a massive 49 assists, goals don't come so thick and fast, but maybe he's played his part now to get the Bracknell Bees back in the game. On the period one all, remember the LM 2-0 at the first interval. This is Tom Gunn. Gunn clears the defensive zone. Come on, Bracknell fans, make some noise, get behind our team. Chance here again, knocked into the corner. Bernard will knock it down. This is Goes. Bracknell Bees. Their fans have started to get behind them. Now the Bees break it again. Gomes will knock it into the corner. 
Chance again on the edge of the crease. Catanaro clears the danger. The puck is knocked up the ice, waved on by the officials. As Dennis, uh, Greg Burke here gets back to try and get Bracknell Bees moving again. Other Dennis held up against the boards. This is Greg Burke again. Knocked into the corner. This is Matt Cote. Again, Air continue to push forward. This is Borba, but Air went out. Bracknell as well, they can't win that back. They're just storming forward with Angelo Catanara to knock that in. He takes a breather now, but still Air in possession. This is Davidson Pierre. Bernard has to watch that carefully. Eventually, many in front of it do clear it. But Scott Young gets forward with the shot, and Bernard, but he catches this carefully. Well, there's Joe Ferraccioli, the man who's given Bracknell Bees hope. Hope which is shared by their chairman, John Nike. 3 1, Air Scottish Eagles lead, and Mr. Nike there looking for more goals from his men. John Knight and Jim Fairjack, similar expressions at the moment. Let's be said, the game's not over yet, is it? A long way to go, but Air lead 3-1. There we say, Bob, the Eagles can't count their chickens yet. <laughs> well, the important thing is, is that, you know, all the coaches in the Super League this season, I'm sure they all say, listen, when you get down, you just got to keep chipping away at it. To the neutral side, slapped back into the corner by Alan Schuler. The Scottish Eagles will chase again, but Rob Stewart with Bracknell Bees behind his own neck. Good movement, Ferracholi with the pass, Grant getting forward. Grant and Ferracholi combined well as they did for the goal just now. Ferracholi again, chance here for Dave Whistle, shot charged down. This is Rob Stewart for Bracknell. Good spell by Jim Farchuk's men at the moment. Going to get a penalty call here where they lose possession. Yes, they do. And now we're going to have a power play the way of the Bracknell Bees. And that will be vital in the context of this game with just under five minutes remaining on the second period. Well, we've got a cross-checking call here. Deep in the zone. Looks like Ryan Kumu's going off. But the Bracknell Bees doing a good job here because they're adding support deep in the zone. That's Rob Stewart. He can go offense if he has to. But that's what happens when you move that puck deep in the zone like that. Keep it deep. Keep it moving around there. When you wait for your chance to get it out in front of the net. So the Bracknell Bees with a foul play. Can they get back into this game? Big guns out. They'll jump into the face off. Marsh is back on the blue line. So too is Crawford. This is Crawford diving in now. Mark Wolf gets there first for the Scottish Eagles. One back by Colin Ward. Crawford again has support from jumping on the blue line. The Bees at the moment playing the puck around as they were a few moments ago. Shot goes in, kicked away by Colin Cavilla. Still the puck comes loose. Eventually killed stone dead by the young goaltender. A little bit of inspiration put into the sails of the Bracknell Bees. Colin Ward, he's a guy out there because he's a man that's got some big goals, as is this fella here, Dale Junkin. When he sees a nose through the net, he's going to let that shot go. And, of course, he's hoping for that right there, that rebound. It's going to lay flat so that the Bracknell Bees can get another good crack at it. Power play then with the Bracknell Bees. One minute and 35 seconds remaining on this power play. They need to get shots on the goaltender, Cavilla. There goes one of them. Takes the deflection away, round behind the net. Still the bees in possession. Air denying the clear shots to goal. Effective defence by Jim Lynch's men. This is Dale Junkin. Trying to get the shot goal was Junkin on the edge of the crease there. Chance there, Cavilla. Well, he's alert there at close range. Doesn't give an inch, but still. Bracknell in possession. Junkin with the shot, narrow angle. The edge of the crease there, Brian Pellerin loses his helmet. Well, there was a war going on in front of that net. That was Scott Young against Brian Pellerin, and I'll tell you, it was all hell breaking loose out there, as you said, Tony, but that's what they got to do. They got to get in front of Callum Cavilla because if he sees that puck, he's going to stop it. You've got to take these goalkeepers off their game plan. A good spell for the Bracknell Bees. They've had four shots already on this power play. The previous two power play advantages that they had, they only had one shot on Colin Cavilla. Here they come again. 
Oh, lovely avoidance there by Gomes of that big check. But they can't keep it in the zone, and now the break's on here. This is uh, Matt Hoffman gets away. Hoffman with the shot. Bernard knocks it down for Brandt. Again, it's spread this way. This is Trevor Chowley, the goal scorer for Bracknell. Stewart to his left. Penalty clock counting down. Shortly, Ryan Camus will be back on the ice for the Scottish Eagles. He is now. He brings the, the back up the street. This is Tom Gomes, over 24 for the Bracknell Bees. And now Rob Stewart with a break on this side. Catanaro takes him into the boards. Loose puck picked up by Tom Gomes. This is Gomes battling. Rob Stewart is number 16 for air. Now for Bracknell. This is Gomes again. Good work by Ferricioli. Looks for the wraparound. Yells for the penalty and doesn't get it. Sean Barham with the break for the Scottish Eagles now. On the edge of the crease, Ron Camus lands in the net. The goal comes adrift to our right. The fish throw the whistle with a puck in the neutral zone. And all hell breaks loose between Scott Campbell and Ron Camus. The champions night at the Newcastle Arena. Well, the bear hugs are on, and I don't think anything's going to be late here because the linesmen are probably going to get in. And they fall to the ice. As soon as that happens, those linesmen do come in. But they tied one another up. Unfortunately, as a result of that play, Ryan Kumu in going to the net. That dissolved the three-on-two for the Brackle Bees going the other way. But nonetheless... Well, there's Scott Campbell. And there's Ron Camus. Well, he didn't spend much time on the ice, Ryan Kumu, because he was coming out of the penalty box there, and he hopped into the offense. There's no better place like the back of the net. Well, there Mark Bernard gets in, tries to keep him in there, because he knows that his team is going back on a three-on-two. Well, it's looking very much like a double also, roughing call on each player from the officials. And Scott Campbell, of course, he just protected his goaltender. He jarred out WWF wrestling. We were looking at the goalkeeper. Scott Campbell gets involved because he's trying to protect him. Nothing really will happen there. Well... Into the bench they go, they should skate five on five, but it's only in the event of a single coincidental minor that they skate four on five. They're to be counting as personal penalties, four minutes each, Scott Campbell and Ryan Camus. Well there, that's how much time he's spent in the box this season. Well, he's a big strong guy, I was speaking to Alan Schuler just the other week when we were in air and his defensive partner there, he calls him the big black hole because Ryan Kumu, he's got tremendous anticipation when players are coming up the ice with a puck and most often he wins those battles. Well, we're into the final two minutes of what's so far been a pretty lively second period with honours even. And the Bees go another goal to really tighten it up before the end of the period. This is Angelo Catanaro, the air captain. A good interception by Johnson. Puck kick ball by Crawford. Burke is going to be on the edge of the creek for the rebound! Oh! Dennis Burke has knocked it into the net. The air Scottish Eagles are back in this with a vengeance as the puck came loose from Colin to Villa. Brackle are back in this. Oh, and truly now. Well, I'll tell you, a huge goal, but it's a turnover. The bees drive for the net. And when you drive for the net, anything can happen. There he is, number 13, Dennis Brady. He picks the rebound up. Camilla on the high shot there. Moves it a little bit. And the Black Bees are back in this ice hockey match. Those high shots, Tony, those are the ones that kill the goalkeeper because they lose sight of what actually happens with the puck if it gets away from them. Well, Jim Farchak will be delighted with the way his team is coming back in this stalling second period. Well, they won in possession. Now they're battling forward. Joe Middlestack is robbed. The B still forces it forward, but this time comes out of that zone and they've got to start again. A pass will knock it around the boards. Near up the ice. Knocked down by the goaltender, Mark Bernard, who has to be alert. 
game has suddenly taken a turn for the better for the Bees. Well, that's a big goal for the Bracknell Bees, not only to get them back into this game, but in the latter stages of this second period. Time and time again, we speak about goals being scored in the latter stages of a period or the start of a period, and it has a tremendous effect on the confidence of the team that scores it. Well, two goals in just over five minutes for the Bracknell Bees. And now with it, air three, a Bracknell two, there's going to be all to play for. What is surely going to be a fine third period. Well, I think that the Bees are also starting to play Tony with a lot more physical presence out there. They're finishing their checks. They're getting into that offensive zone, creating a lot more forecheck. And they're making the air Scottish Eagle defenseman pay for moving that puck. Anytime you add pressure, it becomes difficult. Well, a little bit of a break, but Dennis Burke there has a chance to reflect. Very important goal for the Brackle Bees. Delays for a broken six to be cleared off the ice. Somebody's caught watching just behind. Face off just inside the Bracknell defensive zone. Alan Schuler will knock it into the corner. Cover here is from Matt Cote. Ricciotti kicks it out of the defensive zone. They switch left to Chris Brandt. Brandt tries to step inside his man. Good work there on the intermediate. Zone from Alan Schuler. Ferricioli scored the first goal for Bracknell. Eventually air clear that zone. Puck not back in. They will all have to clear. Air come forward again for Alan Schuler. This is John Parker. Good defensive clearance there. Stewart will clear that. Eventually. Still in trouble though. Chance here for Sean Barham on the backhand. Barham forced around behind the net. But good cover from Matt Cote. A little bit of rust off there as Jamie Steer is taken into the boards. Virtually the take to clear by the Bracknell Bees. And the whistle and hooter go to bring down the curtain on a five second period. A highly competitive period that started with air leading by two goals to nil. They grabbed a throw through Sam Grillo, his second of the game. Joe Fremicholi scored a first for Bracknell. And the goal there that went in from Dennis Burke has made it at the end of the period. Air three, Bracknell two. more live ice hockey coming up on Sky Sports 3. Next Saturday, that's February the 7th, the Cardiff Devils will be in action against the Manchester Storm. It's playoff action, and it's going to be live and exclusive. First chance on Sky to see the playoff action. Those two, of course, in Group B. Right now, though, it's the Express Cup final at the Newcastle Arena. The Air Scottish Eagles taking on the Bracknell Bees. Air, of course, going into that second period, very strong, two goals up. They got another one back very early to make it 3-0, but Bracknell, really, the second half of that second period, came right back into it, and shots on goal there. You can see Bracknell catching up. In fact, it was 16-12 within that period, so Bracknell getting themselves right back into that game. Nick Rothwell's talking to the Air Scottish Eagles, Carrie Bietz. Carry a couple of quick goals from Bracknell. They're right back in it. It uh, wasn't a couple mental lapses on our part, and then they're playing well. I mean, we got to come on a lot stronger than that. I think we just kind of, like I said, a mental lapse there, and then they capitalize. Hockey's a lot about momentum, uh, and carrying it into the third, uh, you got to say Bracken will have a bit of it. I'd have to say so. I mean, they scored two big goals there in the last 10 minutes, one in the last two minutes, and, and you don't want that to happen. And uh, like you said, I mean, they're going to have the momentum, and we're just going to have to try and take it away from them, get playing our game again, and uh, see if we can wrap this thing up in the third. You guys have a lot of experience uh, coming back in these kind of games. What do you got to do? I think you just got to get back to what you did off the bat. What, what helps you win, what helped us win all year, and that's using all four lines, hitting, grinding, getting the puck down low, and shooting the puck on net, get Bernie moving a bit. Thanks a lot, Kerry. No problem. Kerry be out there talking to Nick Rothwell, and all of a sudden, a very different team talk in prospect in the Air Scottish Eagles dressing room. Bracknell getting right back into it. It was it a period of two halves, wasn't it? Because Air dominated the first ten minutes. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking the game was over uh, with ten minutes to go in that in that second period, but the uh, they really came they really came out on there at the end, and uh, uh, I like I like some of the plays that Bracknell were doing. They started to get a little confidence when they got the first goal, then they started to try some things. They tried some little moves, and uh, I was impressed. With Let's them. have a little look at the uh, Sam Grolio, his second goal which of course made it 3-0 and this is where we really thought it was going to be all over well he shows a, a real turn of foot he's he, he's uh, behind both of the Bracknell defensemen and, and now all of a sudden there he goes he takes off and he and he waits the goalie out a little bit makes a good move and uh, 
and buries it. But what a what a turn of speed! I mean, uh, both both the Brackle defensemen had the angle on him, but uh, there he hopped over a stick and. and uh, very nice goal, one of the prettier goals of the year. Well, Bracknell did have their chances early on in that period. And we can see here Colm Cavilla, who is, of course, the second choice, really, for the uh, Air Scottish Eagles, making a great save. Yeah, this is a, a, a break that Bracknell got, a, got a, a, a numbered advantage here. And they're going to the net, and I think it's uh, Junkin makes the pass to McCosh across crease. And Cavilla makes a great save. He slides across, stacks his pads, and there, there's, there's nowhere for uh, McCosh to shoot. Of course, the stats all appeared then about how many shutouts he'd have, but it wasn't to be because, thank goodness, Goodness for the Bracknell Bees, Joe Ferricelli, a phenomenal goal scorer, got this one back for them, and it was a very important goal, wasn't it? Yeah, they worked hard for this goal. They uh, they, they worked there across the, the along the boards, and they outmuscled them a bit. I think uh, Air were, ca were caught sleeping a little bit, and uh, 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 Parko lost his man there. But Ferricelli just uh, uh, buries it here. He gets. The puck comes out in front, and really the air player should have had him, but uh, there it is, Fairchelly scores. It's fair to say, and it's often, often said a goal can turn a game around. It really did there, didn't it, for Bracknell? As you say, they then made some great plays. Dennis Burke, of course, got them their second to make it 3-2. Yeah, this is a, a, another, another illustration of shooting the puck here. The long shot comes. Not really a dangerous angle, but he gets it up high, and, and there's a rebound, and, and those are the goals uh, that, that, that come out of just shooting the puck. The goalies have trouble sometimes. There's a rolling puck and, and knuckleballs on them, just like the goal we saw earlier that Middlestad scored. But, uh, you know, he, he wasn't able to control the rebound, and uh, the, the Bracknell player drove to the net hard and, and put the puck away. Certainly a very exciting third period in prospect. I think you'll agree, Mike Blaisdell. But for the moment, Joe Baraccioli is talking to Nick Rothwell. Joe, uh, you guys needed a couple of goals, and you responded well. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a tight game out there. If we uh, give them an edge one way or another, they're gone. Like, uh, that's the second, third goal we gave them up. One quick shot, they went and break away, and they're gone. But we battled back. We've been doing it all year long, and we've got a couple big goals, and hopefully the tie to turn into the third. It's, uh, it's one heck of a hockey game out there right now. How'd you guys feel uh, when that first goal went in? Well, we had a chance earlier. Uh, McCosh and uh, Dale made a great two-on-one and uh, nearly put her home. But uh, we got that goal, and, you know, it, you wait for that. In a game so tight like this, once you get a goal, things might start rolling for you. And then we got the second one. Uh, Danny just driving to the net real hard, and it worked out real well. So hopefully we can carry it on to the third. You guys got the momentum right now. How important is it that you push really quick in the first couple minutes? Well, you know, we played the whole Express Cup. You know, it's 16, 17 games. It's all down to 20 minutes now. So we can't we can't hold up for anything now. We just got to come out and play smart defensively. It's still a one-goal game. We don't want to give up too much. And uh, hopefully get the next one and then go from there. Just keep rolling. Good luck, Joe. Thanks. Joe Ferracero, the scorer of the first Bracknell goal, talking to Nick Rothwell there. Very important goal. How do you anticipate now the Air Scottish Eagles coming back out? Because it did shock them, didn't it? They looked like, OK, we're going to cruise to this. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Air have woken up now. They, they, they played a tremendous first half of the game. But now uh, Bracknell have a little bit of a momentum going. And I think uh, Jim Piarchuk will be in there telling the boys, hey, let's we got something going here. Let's get let's keep it going. Let's get let's put you know pour the throttle on. But uh, you know, Air's the type of team they may just came, come out and get another goal and uh, and kill them off. In the moment, Mike. Thanks very much. Well, of course, this is the Express Cup final, but the rest of the teams join in the action at the weekend when the playoffs start. And if you fancy going to see a game, this is what's up for you. Group A on Saturday sees Newcastle at home here at the Newcastle Arena against the Sheffield Steelers. On Sunday, Air are going to play host to Newcastle. The Steelers are at home against Mike's team, the Nottingham Panthers, on Sunday. And Group B sees Sunday and the Cardiff Devils at home to Bracknell and the Manchester Storm taking on the Basingstoke Bison. So plenty of games. We fancy catching one over the weekend. Well, as ever, Nick Rothwell finds the most interesting things in this arena. I'm sure he's got one of them right now. Let's join Nick. Hi. Check this out, Gabby. It looked pretty good on the bed, wouldn't it? Uh, nice fluffy guy. With some Bracknell Bees fans. How you doing? All right, thank you. You enjoying the game? Oh, absolutely. It's brilliant, yeah. Now, whose is this stuffed doll? This is our bee. This is supporters' bee for the whole club. Has he got a good name? Uh, B. <laughs> Just B. I thought so. Now, check this out, okay? You guys, what's the, what are these little things on your faces? Can you look? Can we see this here? Look at this little Bracknell B logo. Who put that on? I did, on the coach on the way out here. You guys all have them, eh? Yeah. yeah. Now, back here, here's a guy named Nick. This is a good guy, a uh, good name. Are you enjoying the game? Very much. I think we can still come back in it. We're surprised a lot of people, and I think we can probably do it with a bit of luck in the second, third period. That sounds really good. But don't forget, we've got a couple of cool customer air fans here eating the ice cream, having a good time, and uh, it's not over yet, Gabby. No, Nick, and I hope you've not got any funny ideas about getting yourself a tattoo during the break. 
Well, of course, it is 3-2 to the Air Scottish Eagles after the second period. It was a great second period. Bracknell got themselves right back into it, and those fans, don't they just know it? Looking forward here to what's sure to be a thrilling third period. Can Bracknell get another one back? Wait and see. The third period is just around the corner. Join us after the break. Another big premiership clash coming up on Monday night. One with a definite London flavour. West Ham versus Arsenal. Both teams successful in their FA Cup replays earlier this week. And they meet each other in the next round. But this is premiership. Three points are up for grabs. It's live from Upton Park Monday night from 7 on Sky Sports 1. Right now, though, it's the Express Cup final. The Air Scottish Eagles in action against the Bracknell Bees. And what a thrilling game it's been so far after two periods. This is how we got to 3-2. Joey Middlestadt opened the scoring for the Air Scottish Eagles after just 36 seconds to make it 1-0. Hopefully we'll be showing you how Joey Middlestadt made it 1-0 just very, very shortly. Mike Blaisdell, Dennis Burke couldn't have made this game more interesting, could he, by scoring that second goal for Bracknell with just a couple of minutes to go in the second period. Yeah, that's a, a tremendous time to score a goal right at the end of a period like that. And now uh, they go into the locker room and they, they have a little talk and they're all excited and they got a 3-2 hockey game. And, uh, you know, Bracknell are just excited, you know, ready to get out there, I'm sure. They're just biting at the bit here. And, uh, you know, the air are going to have to go out and try to settle things down, take control of the game again. It's not exactly what we expected to see out of Bracknell, is it, as well? We, we were surprised at how low they seem to be in the first period. But to have Bracknell in a final itself is quite an amazing achievement for Jim Furacek, isn't it? Exactly. But Jim does a good job with his guys. And, and he's got, he, he may not have the talent that Air has, but they work very hard. And I think they, they they worked very hard at the start of the game, and they were very, very good all game. But now Bracknell's starting to see a few openings, you know, a little bit of daylight every once in a while, and they've got some skilled players that are that are making some things happen out there. And I think uh, this is going to be one tremendous period now. Excellent for Super League as well to have two teams that aren't the traditional big teams, that yourself uh, and Manchester, perhaps the teams that, that we expect to see in the finals. Cardiff as well shows how open the league is, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm really happy for Bracknell. They've, uh, you know, Jim's done a very good job there, and they've got a, they've got a good bunch of players, and they, they play a real strong style of hockey. They're not a dirty team, you know, they don't take a lot of bad penalties. They play a very good, a good, entertaining game of hockey, and it's, and it's nice to see them in this final, and, uh, you know, not saying that I want them to win or anything, but, uh, I, you know, I, I'd like to see a trophy go, go south instead of north again. <laughs> of course, I'm sure Jim Lynch would disagree with you, but if they did do the Grand Slam, I don't know if you know this, but it was 1,000 to 1, the odds on them doing that before the season, which just shows you how surprised and surprising this result would be. Well, uh, Jim... Jim, it looks like he must feed these guys some some haggis or something before the games because they just they're mean and they're snarly and they, they play a very good good style of hockey as well. There's a kind of almost a, a telepathic understanding between the players sometimes, isn't there? From there, they they really understand where they're where they are on the ice. Their ice positions are excellent. They're, they're the best passing team in the league, and they, they, they just seem to know where, when, when someone's open, and they, uh, like you said, eyes in the back of their head, but they, they, move, they, they know where they're supposed to be. They all do their assignments well, and they're, they're a very well-coached team as well. Mike, I think we're just about ready to get underway in the third period, so let's join our commentary team, Bob Carroll and Tony Millard. Well, it could hardly be tighter, and those goaltenders are going to be the key men in this final period, with Air Scottish Eagles leading by three goals to two. Remember, they led 2-0 at the end of the first period, but the Bracknell Bees have stormed back, and now it's all to play for here in this final period of the Express Cup final. If it's level after 60 minutes of play, of course, we go to overtime. More on that later, but our official Mike Rowe acknowledging both goaltenders in position and checking with his goal judges. And now we'll be underway in this final period with air in the lighter strip, defending the goal to our right. Bracknell Bees in the conventional horizontal yellow and black stripes defending the goal to our left and in possession. They clear their defensive zone. Joe Middlestack comes across. This is John Parker. Parker on the break for air. They got a chance to go full. Byron with the shot. Bernard with the save. And he wasn't quite sure where that finished up, but eventually coming up with the goods. Early on in a period, you know, the goaltender's just coming back into the game a little bit. So you want to try and get that shot early on. Here's a three on two. Sean Byron gets the big shot away. And look at that. There's a goaltender that's got a lucky post behind him. And Parko knew that because he was behind the net and he saw the loose puck sitting there. Good job by the defenseman to come in and help Mark Bernard. Well, indicative perhaps of the way the Bracknell Bees fortunes might be changing. This is Brian Peller into the Bees in possession. Up against the boards. He's taken into the boards there. 
the chasing qualities of Jamie Steer, but Pellerin gets the break on the far side. Into the neutral zone, he's got support here, getting forward is Todd Kelman. Dumped into the corner, but it's Vince Bow back there first for the Scottish Eagles. Jamie Steer is going to his right, it's helped on towards Steer now. This is Parco. Sean Barham is to his left, Steer in possession. Barham and Parker combined to retain possession. This is Barham now, number 16 for the Scottish Eagles. Nicks it around the boards. Parker sidesteps his man. Good support here now going in from Jamie Steer. Shot goalwards knocked down. Shot going in from Sean Barham and Bernard have done it by Cedar. I don't think there's any other team in the league that's better at this, and that's keeping that puck deep and creating a cycling effect. And there you see the puck comes out of the out of the zone there, I should say, or just out of the corner by Jamie Steer to get that shot away, but it's the patience that the Air Scottish Eagles show once they start cycling with that puck deep in the zone. Busy night for Mark Bernard. Face off to his left. Montinari. And this is Brandt on the break for the Bracknell Bees. Again, can't hear for Dave Whistle. Scott Young tries to hold off his man Whistle, but eventually this is uh, Mark Wolf switching it around to Stuler. Sam Gallow, two goals to his name already. Gets the break forward through that neutral zone. Leaves it for his trailer. Bernard knocks it down with his gloves. Scott Young with the shot, takes it effect. Good forechecking qualities by the Scottish Eagles, but now break is on here and it's shot goalwards from Whistle just wide. Somehow Colin Cavilla lost that, and it trickled past the post. All is even with the post counting this period. The Bracknell Bees clear the zone. Both teams get a chance to change on the fly. Scott Young to Grillo. Grillo will flick it out from that defensive zone. Knocked into the corner. Purdy knocks it out of that defensive. Well, he doesn't because, in fact, it just goes out of the zone. And coming forward there very quickly, number 23, is Greg Burke for the Bracknell Bees, but it's out over the blue line. Here's Dave Whistle, he just lays into that baby, I'm afraid, but it's a low shot. Colm Cavilla tries to handle that with his glove and it's maybe a bit awkward for him. Just eludes him and goes by the wide side of the net there. Well, certainly the spirit is there from the Bracknell Bees at the moment. And they pull this back, they knock it into the corner. Chased around by Dennis, but this is Tom Gomes winning the puck for Bracknell. Gomes is taken into the boards quickly there by Angela Catanara, who holds it up with his skates. Eventually looking it around the boards, but uh, Johnston goes for the shot, Goldwoods, and that uh, finishes up off the plexiglass. And, uh, Dennis Purdy went for the hit and missed his man. This is Tom Gomes for Brank. Backhand support. This is Burke, scored the second goal. Tries to create an opening, but cover here from Catanara. Puck helped out of the defensive zone by Carrie Biet in possession now. This is Biet. Can he go all the way? Big hit knocks, takes him into the boards, and now the break's on here for Bracknell with Johnston. Crawford leaves it, but that was a, a non existent trader, and it allows Purdy to set Air Scottish Eagles away with Scott Young on the far side. Offside. Offside call, tight one. Well, there are the Bees fans, and they know their team is now well and truly back in this game. Well, they've got the momentum going in their favour. But nonetheless, the Air Scottish Eagles supporters, they're the ones with a one-goal lead. And uh, as we said, I think the Air Scottish Eagles have played so consistently, consistently all year long that, you know, one goal is a huge difference for them, and they know that they can try and capitalise on that. They'll hang on to that as best as any team in the league certainly will. Air three, Bracknell two. Just over three minutes gone in the third period. This is Shane Lafosh for Bracknell. Uh oh! <laughs> Jeff Hode is on the ice. His first lead on the ice. And Jeff Hode and Bo Ward swap punches. Punches. Well, Jeff Hode. And Colin Ward, and they're going toe to toe. And that's what you like to see, I suppose, in an ice hockey fight. Let them go at it, let them get their frustrations out. And they'll both go to the penalty box, but it was a well-fought battle. 
Jeff Holmes just coming off of injury. And you know he's been in a battle. It's gotten straight off the face off here. Not much time for it. Well, both players, I think, are going to get two plus two for roughing there. And the call's being, will certainly be two plus two. There they go, toe to toe. Stand back. But it looks like Ward gets the initial start. And it was a hard one. A haymaker coming from Jeff Holt there that just missed. But oh. I think that Jeff Holt may be hurt on that one a little bit, Tony. I'm not sure. Well, I think both players took a little bit of a battering there, and because it's not a coincidence, single minor, both teams will remain with five out skaters. Colin Ward and Jeff Hogue will each serve two plus two for roughing. Well, I don't know whether he's hurt his hand or his shoulder, but it looks like Jeff Hogue may need some medical attention. I think he's going to be going to the dressing room. I don't know, I think that might be his groin, eh, Tony? He's had trouble with that all season long, and maybe he twisted it there. Yes, well, Jeff Hogue hasn't had much ice time tonight. That was his first stint on the ice. We knew he had groin problems before he came out. I think he suffered an injury straight away, and that seemingly is Jeff Hogue out of the game for the line. Well, Jeff Hogue, he's such a hard worker, too, and, I mean, he's one of the players that the Air Scottish Eagles would sooner have in the lineup because they know darn well that he's evident for very very big goals all the time well it means that uh, there was, should be somebody sitting out the penalty but uh, as both teams are at full strength at the moment it's not necessary of course and Colin Ward remains on the bench and both teams came five on five well it's a very sophisticated injury as well Tony that's why Jeff Hoad said Every time we speak to him, it takes time for that to heal, and you can't let yourself sort of jump into things. And, of course, you just slip a little bit, you pull it some more, and now, you know, he's probably going to struggle in terms of playoff hockey, and which is when they really need him. This is Brackle on the break with Johnston. Junkin is with him, but a tight offside call. Linesman on the far side. Michael Evans calls it, and the action will come back just outside that air defensive zone. Well, here's a chance to look at that offside call. It's just Jeff Johnson going in there, but unfortunately, Dale Duncan just jumping the line there a little bit, and he goes on the offside. What a point scorer he's been in his career in the Super League here in Britain, eh? The thing about this guy is he's such a great anticipator. That's when you see him. He's at his best when he gets inside that blue line into offensive territory. Puck now then in that Bracknell defensive zone. Sean Barham with the full checking for air to put them under pressure. Now this is uh, spread wide right to Johnston. He will flick it into the corner. The chase is on on the far side. In good interception there from the goaltender, Cavilla. Back into the neutral zone it comes. Pellerin knocks it into the corner for Bracknell. This is Vince Bow. Yeah. Still they keep it in. Good work here now. And Bracknell getting forward. Knocked on the back end by Kelman looking for Ferracioli. Junkin can't get the interception. McCosh misses the puck. Eventually it's fired backhand wise back into that zone. If Bracknell change, Air could get them on the hop. This is Sean Barnum. Feigns the shot. Good interception now, and uh, this is Ferracholi's trying to get things moving for the bees. Chris Brandt storms forward. Not back up the ice, and the icing ball will take the action back down into the air defensive zone. There's Matt Cote, well known for his defensive capabilities and the way that he's able to block shots. I'm speaking to his father-in-law before the start of the game, and he's saying to me, listen, this guy still plays with inspiration. Well, he's been at Bracknell a long while. He's a long servant. Well, it's still tight here in this Express Cup final. Air leads three goals to two, but this is Bracknell in possession. Shot from Stewart. Takes a deflection. High up into the crowd, and the face-off will come back down almost from whence it came. Well, Rob Stewart, he's the cool, well, steady the customer winner, back there on defense the for the Bracknell Bees. He's the captain of the side, and most often you'll see him as well. When he gets that opportunity, he likes to let that shot go, and he likes to delve a little bit into the offense. Deflection there, up into the cheap seats, Tony. Well, that shot then going in from Stewart again, almost counting for Villa grabbing it in the second attempt. Well, and Cavilla playing his part, the young goaltender. They say it's his competition. 
Bob Dobson tonight on the bench. I'm pleased to hear that as well. You know, the air coaching staff keeping moving there, allowing Callum Cavilla to continue in this competition. Gain some confidence himself. And, you know, that's what a team effort's all about. And, you know, consistency has been the key for these Air Scottish Eagles all season. Oh, they're still very much in this as Camus tries to set them moving. Shots is in long range there from Jamie Steer. Uh, Mark Bulls, rather. From now in possession. Chance here for Wolf again, but now the Bees get the break here. Chris Brack will knock it goalwards. Cavilla narrows the angle and knocks it down. Ryan Camus. Helped on, flicked out, clearing that defensive side this time by Mark Wolf. Icing Paul will take it back up into the uh, defensive zone okay, and allow Brayton to, to continue to mount the pressure. Well, a lot of I suppose, ice hockey people would say that any time you have a fight between two players on either side and, you know, the guy that maybe perhaps gets the upper hand in that fight maybe says, well, you know, that gives the momentum to the team a little bit. But uh, Bracknell, I feel, you know, are starting to apply a little bit more pressure now. They're wanting to try and get that one goal back. And the physical presence just seems to be there. They're starting to get a little bit hungrier now. Carry Biet on the break for air. The knock it forward, great chance here, but that's offside, surely. Dennis Purdy is just too early. It was time. Well, there's the long pass. I'm not sure, very, very close, but Dennis Purdy, it's great to see him skating the way he is now because of that leg injury that he had earlier on in the season, and he's been a big part of this Air Scottish Eagles lineup. Coming back in, getting those big goals for him, eh, to win that championship. Well, not only did he get the winning goal, he got the one before it. A two-goal night, that was Dennis Purdy. Bees in possession now. Crawford will knock it into the corner. Slightly different tactics being adopted, but Scott Young breaks it up for air. Bench Anthony chases on here, and a great opportunity here for Biet with a shot. Good save, Bernard, on the angle. Bernard came about eight feet from his goal to get the angle tight on that and produce the save. Well, I think this is exceptional speed here as Biet lets the shot go. But once again, great goaltending. Hey, look at Mark Bernard there. Not a very good angle for the shot to let go. And Mark Bernard knows that. He knows he can come out and cut that angle down. Off the face-off remains in the Brackle defensive zone. Sean Barham looking for the draw for the Scottish Eagles. Official's not happy with that face-off. Barham vanished to the far side of the circle, and John Parker will take this. Does win the draw. Scott Young pushing forward, taken into the boards this time by Dennis Burke. Burke trying to clear the zone, doesn't succeed, does in the end, second attempt. Chases on for Gomes. Catanaro gets across. Gomes will win this back against the boards and try to create an opening. Barham gets back here for the Scottish Eagles and feeds John Parco on this side. Barham continues on his forward skate with support from Steer. This is Sean Barham. Bracknell Bees now. Another little frack off breaking out in front of the goal there. But, uh, the break is on here for the Bees. Interception by Barham. Still he's back next year. This is Clark over the Scottish Eagles. Big hit from Crawford there, takes his man into the boards. Official save. Take a look down. That will bring the action back down. A friendly battle breaking out there. Well, we've got news of Jeff Poe from our ringside reporter Nick Rothwell. Yeah, guys, I was just in the uh, changing room with Jeff and uh, his uh, left. His left leg, the groin, all the way from the groin down to the knee, he says it's just shot. It uh, it snapped when he got out on the ice. He got into that little bit of a mix-up, and uh, it, it, he just felt it. He said it just snapped, and it's really bad news for Air because you can see that you know the, the four lines that they normally run, they're not going to be up to go. They're going to have to put someone in, and uh, I can't see Hode coming back for a long time. Bad luck on Jeff Hode. I know he was delighted to be among those uh, league celebrations. I'm sure he'd be among the cup celebrations were they to win this but the Bracknell Bees very much back in this game now this is Todd Kelman as the Bees defend the goal to our left this is Jeff Johnston knocking the puck forward middle step with the interception bow for air this is Montanari tries to set them going good work here, screen the puck left 
And this is Mark Wolf. Wolf shoots and Bernard saves it again. Mark Bernard is having a busy night growing confidence now. Here's some good defensive work though, I think, you know, this two-on-two -two battle. Now watch Mark Montaneri, where's he going? He's driving for the net. Mark Wolf, he lets the shot go. He's hoping for a rebound there. That's an ideal play, but that's good one-on-one. -on -one. Defensive coverage by the Bracknell Bees to allow the goaltender to concentrate when he does best. Well, had a busy time in the semi-final as well. Bracknell Bees win the draw this time. They clear that zone. Well, they don't quite in the end, and in fact, it's kept in this is Purdy. Cote having his work cut out to deny the opportunity. Still the Scottish Eagles come for the chance there, just wide on the backhand there for Dennis Purdy. Bernard pleased to see that one go by. Still there buzzing. Round behind the net. Chance there as it's eventually cleared out for Chris Brown. Well, a great opportunity coming the way. All the air Scottish Eagles for Matt Hoffman. Couldn't find space and now. Well, Bob Stewart is having to work here. Cut one back by Carrie Biet. This is Hoffman. Round he goes, looks for the wraparound, but Brant will get the break here for the Bracknell Bees. Penalty call here, and this will give a power play the way of the Bracknell Bees as Chris Brant is brought down, and that could be vital and decisive in bringing them back in the game. Well, the back check, Chris Brandt going into offensive territory. It looks like the hook's being put on him by Big Matt Hoffman. And, of course, that's going to give the Bracknell Bees a power play scenario. More importantly, the face-off in offensive zone of the Bracknell Bees. Well, there's the hooking penalty on Matt Hoffman. He will now sit out two minutes or until Bracknell Bees score. If they score a power play goal here, they're tied up in this Express Cup final. Remember, at the moment, air leading 3-2. off is uh, just about 10 feet inside that air defensive zone. A bit of touchiness among the players at the moment. Well, they all go in different directions there, and eventually McCosh tries to win the puck back as it comes loose. And he's going to be put under pressure here. This is Shane McCosh being put under pressure by Jamie Steer for air. Now, air get forward. This is Grant Pellerin. Across the crease, looks for support. Colin Ward now back on the ice for that 2 plus 2 is over. Bees playing with patience at the moment to try and create this opportunity on the power play. Deflection in front of goal, eventually whacked away. McCosh keeps it in but just, and now Air could get the break here. This is David St. Pierre on the backhand. Bernard knocks it away. Now Pellerin will get the break for the Bracknell Bees. Air battling to get back. But now they have a chance of getting forward because Brett are almost caught on the hop, changing their line. And this is Parco taking the puck back. Now Catanaro will nudge it forward. No icing call against uh, Air, of course, because they're the short-handed team at the moment. And there are 50 seconds remaining on this power play. This is Gomes. He has support from Dave Whistle. Gomes is going to go all the way. Catanaro takes him wide. Chance there for Gomes, chance on the edge of the crease, puck coming loose, bodies flying. Eventually, the danger cleared by the calm, cool and collected Sean Barham. This is Joe Ferracioli for Bracknell. Just under ten minutes remaining on the game. Ryan Camus knocks it around the boards and up the ice. Power play clock continues to count down. The air continues to frustrate the Bracknell Bees. Brant with a dummy just wide of goal off the stick of Colin Cavilla. Chance here, Stewart will go for the shots high up into the crowd. And, uh, well, Air yeah, virtually surviving the power play. Just uh, one second remaining. Well, here could have been a play in the power play, the shot from Rob Stewart, but it's one of these knuckleballs. As we said, the puck on end as the shot goes away, and of course, it goes into the seats behind the net. But you had Bees drive into the net trying to get some sort of a rebound if it happened. Unfortunately, the, the shot just wasn't there. Well, it's still desperately tight at the 3-2 margin, and one has the feeling the way the Bracknell Bees are coming back, uh, they might just produce a crucial goal.
Well, you know, that power play was an excellent opportunity for them. I mean, there's just one second left, but they had all kinds of chances, I suppose. And, you know, they just didn't get that clear opportunity. You kind of need a little bit of a bounce in a game that's as tight as this. Vince Bowe eases it up to the blue line. Hoffman can't control it. This is Colin Ward. Goes by one, goes by two. Good interception. Joe Middlestack. But uh, in turn, it's uh, right Keller who knocks the puck down. Keller who throws into the corner. And it certainly hurts when they bundle into those corners. <laughs> Sam Gallo clears his zone. This is knocked down by McCosh. McCosh knocks it around the boards on the far side. They will miss it completely there. And now there's a chance here on the break for Bracknell Bees. McCullough going in there from Burke. Here now composed as they move forward. Mark Wolf knocks it into the corner. Sam Gallo will chase on this side. Kelman with the cover for Bracknell. Gomes controls this just as he moves into the neutral zone. He knocks it around the boards. Johnston will chase on the other side. Scott Young with the interception for air. Young clears his sudden. It's very much dump and chase, but Burt was there too quick. And Gomes is in the zone as well, and the offside call is correct. Well, the Bracknell Bees possessing a very, very basic style of play. Very systematic. Get that puck in the zone, go after it. Try and keep it away from Callum Cavilla. Don't allow the Air Scottish Eagles any sort of opportunity to try and come out of their zone. Add lots of pressure to the defense. Well, still plenty of time left, and it's still desperately tight in this Express Cup final. They're leading 3-2. Remember, they had 2-0 at the end of the first period. A good second period for Bracknell Bees. This is Crawford clears into the neutral zone. It's skating there. Scott Campbell getting forward. This is Scott Young. Young's pass finds Hoffman. Bernard out tight on the angle there. This is uh, 23. It's Greg Burr. Two Burke brothers, both playing for Bracknell. 13 is Dennis Burke, 23, Greg Burke. Purdy knocks it around the board. Bernard helps it on. Scott Young moves in for air on the far side. Young keeps going. Young looks for the wraparound. Now this is Dave Whistable. We're going to get a penalty call here against the Bracknell Bees, and that's not what they want as we move into the final eight minutes of the game. Well, here's one you don't see very often, I have to say it, Joe Fergioli. He's going off on an interference call in front of the net there. You can see there was a defenseman of the Air Scottish Eagles. I'm not sure who it was. He was going into the zone. Joe doing a good job there because he knows he has to pick that man up. He says, if you're going to get onto that puck, you're going to have me in front of you. Well, this could indeed be a testing time for the Brassel Bees because remember, the only power play goal of the night, a valuable one came from Sam Grillo to uh, give the Air Scottish Eagles confidence. But now, the big men around. Sean Barr and the centre man trying to win the draw for the Air Scottish Eagles. On the power play. And leading by three goals to two. And Parker tries to create the opening. This is Scott Young. Vince Bow knocks it forward to Barr. Barr lobs it basically over the goal and into the corner. Jamie Steer has support on the blue line from Scott Young and on this side from Vince Bow. This is where Air try and control things. Deflection, look for the deflection, and somehow John Parker on the edge of the crease. Well, Mark Bernard guessed well. Bracknell battling to clear that zone, eventually McCosh doing so. We've got a chance here for short handed goal. Great work there. And the cover to deny Dennis Burt the clear opportunity. Marco feeds Barham on this side. Barham is taken into the boards. The puck finishes up around the back of the net. But eventually on this side is Scott Young. Colin Ward will knock it right around the boards. No icing call, of course, because it's Brattles that are shorthanded. 50 seconds now remain on this power play. And since it's Bob, the vital time for the Bracknell Bees. They have to survive this power play. I think it's very important to them. They're doing a great job so far doing nothing fancy, just making sure that they clear the zone with the puck on any loose puck and adding plenty of support 
in their own zone. And Shula has it now for the Scottish Eagles. With the superior advantage in terms of numbers. This is Mark Montanari. Bernard has to be alert on that. Cote is helping. Battle is joined for air from Sam Grillo. This is Montanari again. Ten seconds on that power play remaining. As Montanari retains possession for air. Time is on their side. This is Sam Grillo. Already two goals for his name. And that is in his third. Oh, couldn't have seen that as he kicked it away. But uh, in the end... Penalty killed satisfactorily, and it remains air three, Bracknell two. Well, that's got to be inspiration applied to the Bracknell B side. They know that they've done a great job killing that penalty late in the game. Now we can concentrate on trying to reduce that deficit and tie this game up and see what happens from there. And that man, Jim Fairchuck, the coach for the Bracknell Bees, testing all his ingenuity in the closing stage of this game. Five and a half minutes remaining. An air of the team that leads by three goals to two. Power play goal tonight. The only one there counting for Sam Grillo in the first period. Bracknell being forced back. They need to break. They need to produce shots on goal. Air now being pushed back. So could be a mistake here and a chance here with good defensive cover in the end. 28 for Bracknell Bees, they're clearing that into the corner of this quarter. This is Scott Campbell. Crawford again for the Bracknell Bees. Ryan Camooch clears his zone, and Purdy helps it on. You can see this has been a bit of a game of tic-tac-toe, isn't it? Get that puck, don't lose it in neutralized territory. But certainly get the puck in his own and go after it. Dave Whistle created the opportunity, and Junkin shot only just off target. Dennis Purdy with the pass, but Kosh reads it well. Kosh having a good game for Bracknell tonight. Forward time and time again. Can't the shot for Junkin. Oh, great opportunity there. He saw the man on the far side, and perhaps he should have gone for the shot. Well, that's what you wonder about. I mean, I know he was thinking past there, no doubt about it. You got it right on. But maybe he should have had that shot away. He was one-on-one -on -one with a goaltender. I see. Maybe Bracknell Bees will regret he didn't go for goal then. Well, that man there, Shane McCosh. My money man of the match for Bracknell. Ah, he's done a tremendous job tonight, Tony. And, uh, you know, he's come forward, certainly in these latter, latter two periods. I mean, he's really made his skating influence known. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the Bees have had the success they've had in this game. Just over four minutes remaining. And Air, remember, who led 2-0 at the end of the first period. And now only 3-2 in front. Getting near times when people have timeouts and remove goaltenders and all sorts of things. Oh, it gets kind of complicated, doesn't it? But uh, I'm certain if we still keep that one goal difference, we're going to see something like that. Now Junkin just bit to win the face off. Good work there by Barr and wins it. To allow Montanari to skate here now. Uh, middle step rather. Makosh seems to have covered every inch of this ice tonight and chase that back and the ice in court will take it back down to the air Scottish Eagles end well you must look for Sean Byram to take a few pace offs in the latter stages of this game because I know that the air coaching staff very rely on him most heavily when it comes to face off situations and winning those battles he's very very good at them a bit of nail biting and a bit of gum chewing from Jim Lynch one goal not necessarily fair insurance for he and his team that man Jim Fairchuck, and he produced something. Wrap it out of the hat before the end. Air have been in this situation before. They're getting used to winning trophies, but this is Colin Ward for the Bracknell Bees. Chance here for McCosh. This is Ward again. Chance at the edge of the crease. Charge down there by the courage of Vince Bow. McCosh with the jump. Just off target. Kelman forces it in the corner. Puck held up against the balls, but now Barham, worried by Junkin. Trying to force an error, but now the Bracknell Bees will have to chase it back. Bees changing their entire strength. Air Scottish Eagles too. This is uh, Johnston getting forward. Taken down well there. Good interception by Vince Blow, closing the gateway to goal. Crawford knocks it into the corner. Burke helps it on. Chance at the end of the crease there. Oh, just oh, 
goal. That was so desperately close for Tom Gomes. Nearly controlling the puck brilliantly as it bounced, but still they pushed forward. Johnston on the edge of the crease, kicked away there by Middlestack. Rackle Bees haven't given up yet. Big hit. Burt locks it around on the backhand. This is Crawford. Support from Gomes. This is Gomes in possession. Looks for support on the blue line. Knocked around by Burke again. Still the Brattle Bees. And now the break. We've got a two on one here for the Scottish Eagles. Good Sam Grillo sewing up here. This is Grillo looking for his hat trick. Grillo goes all the way and somehow it's still there. On his fly. This is Grillo for Air Scottish Eagles. Wayne Crawford. Stays calm for the Blackwood Bees as air change. Could they get caught on the hop here as Gomes gets forward? Gomes goes by one, got support here from Burke, but eventually cleared into that neutral zone. This is Angelo Catanaro in the air. Two minutes remaining. Two minutes remaining. Bracknell forcing the puck forward. Bodies go in. This is Chris Brandt getting back. Support here from the pot. Posh dumps it into the corner. Scott Young clears the danger, but not fully. Young still battles. Bracknell holds it up in the corner. This is Chris Brandt. Deflects it into the crease. Oh, and a desperate chance coming the way. Joker and Jody there, who could have tied it up. Sean Byron spreads it right. This is Purdy. Goaltender Bernard is out. Clear it into the neutral zone. Real climax for this cup final now here. Bracknell Bees aren't done. McCosh thought he was pulled down. He will keep going. Shane McCosh has Chris Brandt here, number 25. 70 seconds remaining as Brandt storms forward. Great chance here for Perricholi. Air denying the space. And now the break is on here. Jamie Steer can sew this up. Jamie Steer is still going. Great cover there. Brilliant defensive work by the Bracknell Bees when it mattered. And now they break. Goaltender off the way to our left, and now a chance of an empty net goal will come the way of John Parker, but he can't control him. Burt knocks it around the boards. Into the neutral zone. This is Dale Junkin. Six out skaters now with the Bracknell Bees. Chance here for Parko. He will look up. Knocked back by Burt. Bracknell Bees storm forward. Final 20 seconds coming up. towards the empty net. I see. There are 13 seconds remaining. The face-off is deep in the air defensive zone. Could this be a last chance for the Bracknell Bees? Well, look for timeouts to be called here because we've got a face-off deep in air territory. And I'm sure that the coaching staff will want to be placing players in proper position. There you see them, Jimmy Fierchuk. No one, it doesn't matter who you are seeing this. We've got 13.9 seconds left on the clock. If you're here for the Eagles, make well, some eyes. If you're I think we're going to have a little time out here. Pulled by the air, by the Bracknell Bees. There's arguments about the clock down below us. Both teams will now have a chance to get organised. Well, what will uh, Jim, uh, Jim Fairchild be saying to his team now, Bob? Well, he's just trying to set up a face off for the draw. He wants to make sure that he's got all his guys in the right position for the center iceman, and they'll be keying on where they want that puck to go. And that'll be the important factor because what's going to happen is, is they're going to have guys drive into the net. And of course, there's going to be a shooter on the play. But the important thing is, is to try and get in there, create some sort of a rebound or get a clear shot on the goaltender, Camilla, in the air and air. Well, the Brackle Bees have those 13 seconds to get back in the game. Remember, air lead 3-2. Air are 13 seconds away from the third trophy this season. You've got Sean Byram out there. That'll be a... Certainly a call by Jim Lynch and the coaching staff of the year, Scottish Eagles. He's the guy that they count on to make sure that they get those big draws. There's Chris Brandt back there. He's set up under the screen, but he's the shooter on the play. Chris Brandt just outside your picture to the left, waiting for that draw to be won by the Bracknell Bees. Still it hasn't started. Air 
are leading three goals to two. 13 seconds remaining. Six outskaters for the Bracknell Bees. Air defending in depth and getting organized. Each one of these guys out there, they've got an important job to do. They've got to make sure that they tie their men up, depending on which way that that draw goes. Well, they still haven't been able to conduct the face-off. They've made three attempts down below us. The lines from Michael Evans eventually will drop that puck. It does now. Puck comes loose, bodies fly in, comes back to Brandt. Brandt goes for the shot, kicked up in the air. Puck comes loose, bodies fly everywhere. They will look for the empty net, the Air Scottish Eagles. But still, Brack will push forward. The clock goes down. Oh, it could go oh, in. Somehow the win has gone down to him. As the whistle blows, the Air Scottish Eagles celebrate as they put the clock loose. The Air Scottish Eagles have won their third trophy of the season. Familiar celebrations. The Loons drop it to our left. By two goals to nil at the end of the first period from Joe Middlestead and a power play goal from Sandalone. They went 3 0 in front in the second period. Going to another score again. Two goals before the end of the period to the Bradford Bees, getting from Prematoli and Dennis Burr. But then a goal this last period produced swells of plenty. And it's the Air Scottish Eagles that celebrate their third trophy of the season. Bob Carl alongside me, Bob, just about the hands there, Shady. I'll tell you, it was some game right to the final buzzer, there's no question about it. And we have to say, you know, the Black Bees did a very valid effort. But the Air Scottish Eagles once again become champions. Well, we could go down ringside where the victorious coast, Jim Lynch, is once again alongside Nick Rockwell. Jim, it got a little hairy towards the end there. Well, you got to give Bracken a lot of credit. Uh, I think when they got their second goal just towards the end of the second period, it, uh, you know, we, put, we hoped the rest of the second period might have calmed them down, but they came at us and you got to give them credit. For, for our team, to, I think we laid back a little too much and we hung on at the end, but... Uh, I don't think we should have been that. We were a little too nervous for it. It was a real quick start for you guys. Well, we haven't we haven't had that for a while. We, uh, but if we do have it, we seem to have it on the road. So it was uh, as it turned out, it helped because uh, well, obviously the goaltender might have been shaking a little bit, but he you know, he got his confidence back and made it hard for us the rest of the game. You guys had Colm Cavilla in between the pipes, and uh, he stood on his head. Well, Colm, you know, Colm has played the 90% of this tournament. And he won the semi-final. He deserved a shot in the final, and uh, I'm glad he came through. We only had one minute of the second goal. It was a bit sort of fluky, but uh, he, he held his ground as well. Have you guys built a trophy cabinet big enough this year? I don't know, Nick, but uh, I'm kind of getting tired of meeting you like this, but uh, I wouldn't mind meeting you one more time like this. Of course, like you said, you know, you got the playoffs now to think about. Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a little close to the playoffs winning something like this, so tomorrow we're, uh, we're going to relax a little bit, and we got to have a good hard practice Saturday. And, Obviously, uh, Newcastle is probably watching us tonight, so they'll be prepared for us. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Well, Jim Lynch, Nick Rockwell in the atmosphere. The atmosphere of the splendid final, providing disappointment for that man, Jim Kierchuk. But his team fought for beaten, but certainly not disgraced. No, I certainly don't think so. They worked very, very hard here tonight. They gave it a very valid effort. Every one of those guys out there has to be proud of themselves. And they were beaten by a very, very good team. That start by the Air Scottish Eagles, though, proved to be absolutely vital in the final countdown. Well, when you think about it, you know, you can't give any goals away, and uh, there was maybe one or two soft ones in the game, but there was opportunities where both teams could have got back in. In the end, though, the cup winners, Air Scottish Eagles, three, the Bracknell Bees, two. Mike Blaisdell, an incredible third period, much tighter game eventually than we actually thought, really, as the first period was. Yeah, that was a, a tremendous finish, and... Uh, you know, congratulations to Air. They they, they they deserve to win, but I'll tell you what, that Bracknell team, they worked so hard at the end and they never Yet gave another up. another team you've got to look out for oh, in the playoffs. Oh, no, I mean, they're all, they're all good. And I mean, Jim Fjarczyk's got to be proud of his guys. They made this a, a they tremendous They made it a battle final. right to the end, didn't they? That last three minutes was one of the most exciting three minutes of ice hockey we've seen probably this season. Fantastic scenes out there. It's one of the first times all year I've seen Air really on the ropes. They were, uh, they were fortunate that this game didn't go into overtime. But isn't that the sign of a really good team that they can absorb that pressure and they can get rid of it i mean there were times when they were really really in danger the puck was on the crease but the fact is they didn't let them get that goal which would have equalized and taken us to extra time you no know, there were air players laid laid out all over the ice there were shots hitting the back you know the posts and everything it was a it was hectic but it was exciting it really a great game for the fans. of course the air scottish eagle fans are notorious in their support we've had about 1500 of them here this evening and they've been very vociferous in their support great for them to see their side do what is really very historic three trophies in a season, something that none of us could have imagined would happen to any team. No, 
know, I, I mean, no one would have expected it. Everyone thought the trophies would be evenly distributed, but uh, now, we, now the job of the other seven teams is to take this away from there. You have to say that the Bracknell Bees there going up to get their uh, losers' medals really put up such an incredible fight in that third period. There we can see the, the Bees down, but they shouldn't be despondent with their performance because they gave the crowd here fantastic entertainment this evening. But this is the victorious team, the Air Scottish Eagles. Man of the match there, Sam Grillo with two goals for the Air Scottish Eagles, and well, he deserves that. I'm sure that will get drunk very quickly. These Eagles are very well rehearsed at partying now, thanks to three trophies so far this evening. Who's to say it wouldn't be for? Are you going to bet against the Mike players? I know, of course, you fancy yourself uh, taking the playoffs, but the confidence is going to be so high in this camp, isn't it? I think Bracknell kind of showed the rest of the league uh, that, that air is maybe beatable because that was, uh, you know, they, they, they really took it to them at the end and, and air, air had to weather a storm. But, you know, air got so much composure and they still have uh, Dobson to come back. You know, I mean, I think he's their number one goaltender. So they're be they're a little better with him in the lineup, but Cavilla did a great job tonight. It's air. great that, um, that Jim Lynch has shown confidence and faith in him as well, isn't it? Because there is a temptation you get to an event like this, I'm going to bring my number one net minder forwards. And I think it's shows that Jim really trusts his players, doesn't he? Well, I think he's got a great thing going with his players. I mean, they, they really respect him, and, and they, they're having fun, those guys. And, and, you know, Cavilla did a good job for them in the Express Cup, and he went with them, and, and it showed some confidence in them, and I think the rest of the players appreciated that, and that Jim did that. There he is, uh, Cavilla, enjoying his moments of glory. And we've said all along this season the importance of netminders. Of course, the Nottingham Panthers know all about that, losing, as you did, at a very crucial time of great netminder and Robbins there. And this is nice, isn't it, for, for, for Ed to know that when they need him, they've got a great backup man. Oh, I know. I mean, they're, they're confident with Cavilla, and I've seen him play some excellent games. And, you know, uh, Brack will have a good uh, backup netminder in Greer. He's, he did some... He, he actually shut us out, or no, uh, they beat us 4-1 in our rink, and he had a, a heck of a game as well, so there, there's a lot of teams with two good goaltenders. And the, uh, I think it was Chris Brown we just saw a few minutes ago getting the uh, the man of the match for the Bracknell Bees. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I thought he had a good game. He had a lot of good shots. Uh, I liked uh, McCosh as well, and, and I, actually Bernard played very well after the first goal that he let in. It was a soft goal, but after that he played very well. Sign of a strong player who'd come back from such an early, disappointing thing, 36 seconds it was, wasn't it? Such a disappointing thing to happen to him, but he did come right back. We've said all along this season that he really is a top quality netminder. Yeah, both, both goaltenders had one soft goal each, but then, then they played fabulous. But I thought Cavilla, he really held air in there at the end, the last uh, 10 minutes of the game. Not very um, physical, there were a couple of fights, but it was really, for the most part, end-to-end -end stuff, wasn't it? Pure good ice hockey. Uh, it, was a, it was a very good game. Both teams uh, skated well, and, 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 and Bracknell, after their early uh, jitters at the, at the beginning of the game, really came on stronger. Thoroughly entertained who we were up here, but uh, I think there were two men over the other side of the ice rink who were also entertained, getting very excited at the end. Let's go over now and join our commentary team, Bob and Tony. Hi. Well, there's Chris Brown collecting the last of the losers' medals from David Temme. The presentation party comprising David Temme, who is, of course, chairman of Ice Hockey Super League. Ian Taylor, the chief executive of Ice Hockey Super League. And uh, from the Express, the deputy sports editor, Mike Allen. But now coming up is Angelo Catanaro from Leftis Medal, the captain of the Air Scottish Eagles. They all have to collect medals, and I think they're medals they all deserve, Bob. Well, it's a team effort out there, and these guys all played very hard. This was a long competition. It was added to the season, and, uh, you know, when you think about it, they play an awful lot of hockey, and it's hard on the body. So you got to admire them because they got there. Well, the Air Scottish Eagles, of course, starting with winning the Benson and the Hedges Cup at the Sheffield Arena. They clinched the league title in their own arena at the Air Centrum with that win against Newcastle. And now their third trophy of the season. Remember, the playoffs finals are in a month's time, and nobody, I don't think, will bet against these men who are collecting these medals now, winning a fourth trophy of the season. Whilst they're doing it, the Bracknell Bees are going around to applaud their fans. They're getting the applause as well. But it won't be many 
seconds now before Angelo Catanaro lifts his third trophy of the season. Rob Dobson there collecting a medal. Certainly good work here, John Parker. That man, Sam Gallo, the man of the match. But now the presentation party is getting ready for the really big presentation. There's a magnum of champagne. There's the Express Cup, which we saw early. And very shortly, Angelo Catanaro will be there to collect that magnificent piece of silverware. There is Angelo Catanaro. And certainly the moment has come here at the Newcastle Arena for the Air Scottish Eagles captain, Angelo Catanaro. There's a big debate about whether he's going to collect it or somebody else. He's looking for a team photograph. Really, these presentations, I'm sure that well, Ian Taylor there has his hands on the cup. Mike Allen, the deputy sports editor, and David Temme alongside him from Ice Hockey Super League. But now, the moment that the Air supporters have been waiting for, Angelo Catanaro is asking Colin Cabinna to come with to collect the trophy, the young goaltender who they said this competition belongs to as his hands first on the trophy is exhibited of the team spirit of the Air Scottish Eagles Captain Catanaro, the hug from Cavilla and the rest of the team joins them for a poignant moment Oh it certainly is, Colin Cavilla, you don't know how good that's going to make that young guy feel to get involved in that and just realise how important this trophy is to his team well, it's all coming down from the ceiling. What a magnificent day once again for the Air Scottish Eagles. They're passing the cup around. That Sam Grillo now holding it above his head. He's celebrating with two goals. What a game he had. That man there too, Sean Barron, played his part. He was in the thick of winning those face-offs as he raises the cup high. Support for all of them. They really are quite a team. Jamie Steer holding the cup aloft now. And there's Scott Young. He was covering every inch of the ice tonight. Oh, well, he's done his offensive capabilities once again. You see all the guys. I got those traditional championship caps on just to show you that's another part of the routine and these guys are truly a championship team this year seldom can there have been in british ice hockey bob a team with such spirit and the capabilities of winning things well i think that that's the important thing you know you think that you've got to work together as a team and you've got to stick together as a team if you're going to win championships and that's where the credit has to be due well a man who didn't play a part I'm tonight sure but has been really behind all of Ayers' efforts this year is their number one travel. goaltender, Rob Dobson. He joins us now on the ice with Dick Rothwell. Rob, your partner in crime, uh, did you proud tonight? I, I, you know, I'm proud of the kid, you know, he's done through it all year. I know the first couple of months were tough on him, he didn't get to play a lot. He's got by far the toughest job in hockey, you know, it's something I did last year for the first time, but he sat back all year and watched a lot of games, and I'm proud of his effort. This is his cup, and I'm very proud of the way he responded tonight and played well. And your captain got him to lift it as well. I'm getting tired of that guy, you know. He's, he deserves it. You know, Cat's been around a long game a long time, and, you know, he's a tremendous asset to our team in the dressing room, so it's a real bonus for him to be able to do that. And, you know, I'm just proud of everybody that really responded. But you have to give Bracknell credit. They, they put in one gutsy performance tonight, and they really made it tough on everybody they made a hockey game out of it and i think that's the most important thing it was a tremendous cup and it finished on a tremendous note three pieces of uh, silverware is the uh, trophy cabinet big enough i don't know uh, you know you have to you have to watch out for the rest of the league everyone in this league is a tremendous team right now including bracknell and everyone's playing well so it's important to see what happens here the rest of the year but we'll take it one game at a time in the playoffs okay coming in here hey the guy who's always ready for it always wanting to get in front of a camera oh, yeah, angelo that. how's that one feel uh, it feels great, you know, like we just won one about 10 days ago and, uh, you know, it was back to business and uh, a lot of credit to Bracknell, they played a great game to push us to the limits. It's tiring, it was tiring tonight, very, uh, very pleased and, uh, you know, it's three and, you know, what can I say, you know, you got to win and uh, that's what we did tonight. So. How do you feel about this guy next year? Uh, he played a great game, that's why I call him over. To, he's been great throughout the whole Express Cup, you know, and, uh, I think he deserved to raise the trophy, and uh, rightfully so, he did, so very proud of him. Okay, uh, Colm, did you guys get time enough to uh, wash these shirts? They still sell, smell like champagne from last week. I guess just barely, like, this is getting to be a regular thing this year, but hey, you can't get enough of this, that's for sure. It feels good, doesn't it? Oh, unbelievable feeling. Uh, you know, that's the first one I've played in, so second feeling tonight. It's unbelievable. Look at these fans. You can't say enough. Now you got to get ready for the playoffs. You bet. Yeah, we'll just bear down and get our nose back to the grind but we're not going to think about that for a little while yet. <laughs> you got to put your uh, put your head, take your hat off to uh, Bracknell's performance coming back in it. Unbelievable. Yeah, they gave us a battle right to the wire. What can you say? It was, it was a great game. Yeah. Well done, Cole. Thanks.
Colin Cavilla moves away to join his teammates in the picture that will be in all the magazines and in all the papers. A magnificent team this season, a magnificent picture, and, well, a win in the end, Bob, they well deserve. You see all those guys all grouping together, and that's what it's all about. Every one of them, you got the trainers in there as well. It's all part of it, and that's what makes a winning team. Well, joining them now in the picture is Mike Allen, the deputy sports editor of The Express, and uh, he's right in the middle of the picture as well, getting his picture there. That'll be in the papers tomorrow as well. But the team spirit of this group of lads, young or old, is quite extraordinary, isn't it? Look at that fellow, Scott Young. Well, I tell you what, look at that guy. He's happier than anybody because he's just won another trophy. You know, they come far and few between when you play this game. It's not always easy, and any time you win one more, boy, it's a real happy feeling. Well, certainly feeling for everybody here. Marvellous night for ice hockey, a marvellous cup final, and overlooking it all were Mike Blaisdell and Gabby Yorath. Fantastic scenes, of course, down there. And Mike Blaisdell, you have won a trophy in the uh, British League. You know all about that. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you, you know, you look at them out there, they're, they're obviously not getting tired of winning trophies. They're, they're, they're celebrating with their fans down there. And I think the Scottish fans... Uh, they, they, they've, they've never lost a taste for these trophies either, and they're, uh, I think they're, uh, they're in the hunt for another one too. The weight of expectation on their shoulders very heavy going into the playoffs, of course, now. Their fans expect nothing less than a Grand Slam, you think? No, they, you know, but, but I think it's going to be tough for them. Uh, you know, it's, not, uh, it's certainly not in their hands yet. There's, there's seven other teams that are going to give them a good fight for it. But they, you know, they, they didn't just play especially well tonight, but they won. They did enough to win. And that's a sign of a true championship team. And I think it was right as well what Bob said, or was it Tony, that to get Cavilla to lift the trophy shows just how great their team spirit is, which which is perhaps indicative of why they've managed to be so successful this season. Yeah, they're, they seem, to me, looking at Air as an outsider, obviously I don't coach them, but they look like they're a bunch of guys that, uh, that really get along. They probably get along off the ice as well. They have a real team spirit. They stick up for one another when things get tough. And, uh, you know, they're very happy for their young goaltender to win a trophy. And, and you can see they genuinely feel good for the kid. Thanks for the moment, Mike. Well, their team spirit is clearly in evidence down there on the ice at the moment. And, well, it might be because this is indeed their third trophy so far this season. There's another just around the corner, as we've said, the playoffs. First of all, it was the Benson Hedges Cup. Then just about 10 days ago, they wrapped up the Super League. Now it's the Express Cup. Let's take a look back at some of the better moments, the highlights of their season.
fantastic scenes of the Air Scottish Eagles season so far and what a season it's been. That's their third trophy of the season. Just to remind you, they have beaten the Bracknell Bees by three goals to two in the Express Cup final here at the Newcastle Arena. The beaten team, though, didn't do it with their heads down. They came out here to fight for a result and they very nearly got one. Their coach, Jim Florichuk, is talking to Nick Rothwell. Jim, after a rocky start, you guys uh, settled in nicely, didn't you? Yeah, actually, uh, not a good start at all, you know, them scoring in the first minute. But I, I really felt that the second goal hurt us more than, than the first goal. I mean, we rebounded, we were back in the game. Well, I thought we were playing fairly solid, and we knew it was going to be a, a, a tight game with them. I mean, you got to give them credit. I mean, they've shown all year long they're one heck of a team, winning the B&H, and obviously winning, winning first in the league. They are a great team, and, you know, we, we came here hoping for some lucky bounces, and, you know, we thought if we got those lucky bounces, we were going to upset them, and, you know, they got that lucky bounce to score their second goal, and, you know, again, I thought we had a big hill to climb, but we weren't going to quit. Like, in that room, we knew we weren't going to quit, and uh, it was just a matter of time before we scored, and we felt that we could, we could do it. We honestly believed that we could come back and win the game, and not enough time, I guess. Great for the Bracknell Bees organization to get this far. Yeah, I, for us, I think it's terrific. Uh, I think it's a real bonus. It's a real confidence booster going into the playoffs. I mean, we're now even more determined to do well in the playoffs. Uh, we're not even supposed to be here. You know, like in reality, everybody was thinking, well, no, Bracknell's not going to get into the semifinals even. But to get here, you know, I'm really proud of the guys. We've worked hard, and, and I believe they deserve to be here because they did. They earned it. Obviously, the guys' heads will be down. Now you'll have to pick them up and get ready for the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, there's no question. You know, we're a little disappointed in, in losing. We, you know, I mean, respect to air. They are a great team, and we realize that. But, uh, you know, I feel we'll rebound well from this. Uh, you know, it was obviously a, a great learning experience for us, and, and we've got the playoffs to look forward to. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we are a positive group. Uh, we're just going to continue to battle and work hard. And, uh, uh, you know, as I said, right now we've got some confidence and we believe that we can get the job done. So we're just going to keep going and, uh, again, hope for some lucky bounces and hope to upset some teams in the playoffs. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks. Jim Furichuk, the Bracknell Bees defeated coach, talking to Nick Rothwell there. He's right, they didn't have a right to be here if you said that at the beginning of the season. It's, it's rather a crass thing to say, but it's true. But this is an experience that they will grow from, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. You know, you look at Air last season, they had some uh, tough breaks. Uh, you know, they lost in the Benson and Hedges final, and then they, they, they were narrowly beaten in the, uh, in the final of the playoffs. And they seem to grow from that. You know, that's a tough defeat for Bracknell to take, but I think they'll grow from that, and they'll go into the playoffs now with, uh, you know, they know they can play with the big boys, I'll tell you that, because they, they took it to Air at the, at the end of the game, and I think that's going to help them tremendously. They're going into a, into a strong group in the playoffs, obviously, but I think I could, I could seriously see them coming through and, and, and playing in in the semi-final. Does this help um, a team when they've been in a situation like this that they will then attract bigger players, bigger name players? Yeah, they're, you know, they showcased themselves tonight. I think it did, it did a world of good for a lot of their players. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of teams think, oh, who does Bracknell have? And, 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 you know, a lot of the fans around the country, well, now tonight they got a chance to see what they really have and they show that they have a real fighting heart and, and that they never quit. And I've been impressed with Bracknell from the start of the season. They've given us a lot of problems. And I, I, I respect their coach, and I respect the way they, that their team handles themselves out on the ice. How much have you seen uh, the teams change over the years? You've been in this country quite a while, involved with the league and now the Super League. We've said that this season's it's blown wide open. Now next season we've got the new team coming in the London franchise. There's talk of Birmingham. There's talk of a team in Ireland. How much change have you seen? Well, it's been unbelievable since when the day I set foot in this country and played for the Durham Wasps, and uh, we had a, a little, a little tiny rink, great support, uh, you know, but only three Canadians on the team. Uh, the, the, the lineup was filled with British kids. It was a lot of fun, but the, the game has grown tremendously in the last few years, and it's a, it's a strong brand of hockey. It's, it's, it's an American or a Canadian style of hockey, if you like. Um, it's it's rough, it's tough, it's it's fast, and it's it's got all the the, the thrills. We're getting of the faster all the time as well. We've seen that, haven't oh, we? Yeah. Have the, the speed players, of the game really. The players are bigger and stronger, and and the and the uh, the teams play much more disciplined. The scores are a little lower than they used to be, but I think that's that. Now the fans are starting to appreciate that that there's some good defensive work out there. It used to be 11-9 was a was a routine score, and now you know the three twos are there happening all the time. The two ones, the one nils. Thanks very much for your company this evening, Mike. I've enjoyed it very very much. It's been a great night. Thank Thanks a lot. Thanks, Gary. Well, coming up on Sky Sports, you can see us next on March the 7th, 6.30, the Devils against the Manchester Storm. That's playoff action, Sky Sports 3. And then on Tuesday, March the 10th, more Super League playoff action, 7.30 on Tuesday, March the 10th. But right now, though, it's the end of what's been an amazing evening. The Air Scottish Eagles have taken their third title of the season. Bye-bye.